Whoa! Welcome to Valorant episode 109. Ball is freaking. Ball is freaking. Bren's barely awake. <laughs> I mean, Bren is really barely awake. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Bren, and worry we've about got you. Ender here as well. Thank you for coming on, Ender. Uh, everybody else was um, entirely lazy and didn't want to do this episode because. Um, Ren's yeah. been letting them down recently. And they, they don't like him he as has. a colleague. Yeah. So we just have to keep rotating through other people in the industry until we find people willing to work with him. Have you ever thought of going to the source of the problem and rotating the problem out as opposed to all of your guests? Um, we, we thought about that for a while. We did it for about six months. Yeah, we did it for like six months. <laughs> I would say the quality of the show did increase. Well, <laughs> But, you, did uh, test, uh, you also tested it on the Overwatch podcast, and they weren't happy about that. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. But then the Overwatch podcast people are never happy. So No. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas people seem to revel in the things that we get wrong here on the Valorant podcast. So, so it's perfect to have uh, this collection of people. What have you been doing, Ender? You, you're in a cabin in the woods picking mushrooms? Uh, no, I'm not in the cabin. This is the, the DJ booth on, oh. on Breeze. <laughs> yeah, you know, the cool cat music. Uh, so I'm over here, you know, turning the tables because um, that's what people do. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They DJ. I'm, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, you know, been casting some game changers. Uh, it's been pretty sweet. We we debuted the End Me cast uh, just the other weekend. And, oh yeah, you were yeah. casting with Mimi. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and uh, and we we uh, we got a little loose. I will say the the cast were were more memes than there there were analysis for two analysts. You'd think it would be like really hard hitting analysis. We'd really get to the root of what makes teams you know tick. No, we were just joking. I talked about like blowing up ascent and stuff. It was crazy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> ascent's already been blown up. Those people have gone. Yeah, that was that was the that was the the core the core of the the discussion. There is what's going on. That was on there. the joke. It was an ethical <laughs> debate. It was whether or not it would be ethical to blow it up again. <laughs> To bring it back down <laughs> you know how nasa What's you know blew up the, the asteroid and got it to like move we were thinking like can you blow it up again to bring all those buildings back down you're uh, talking about a nasa the, the nasa thing yeah yeah isn't, well, they, there, isn't there a movie about that there's some movie where I they're like so. in space and they need but to they, shoot a nuke at an asteroid they literally shot a thing at an asteroid recently recently yeah they shot like a fucking spacecraft at an asteroid Huh? Yeah, as an experiment to see if they Those could. Those poor people. <laughs> <laughs> no, not manned. What? Not a manned man trap. Mate, I'm fucking. I'm. I'm in a haze. <laughs> and you are coming at me with this. And just start to sh do the hosting job. Okay. Well, do the thing. I th listen, that, that's pretty cool. Shot a thing at an asteroid. <laughs> NASA will shoot rockets at an asteroid to test planetary defense system. October 6th yeah, of last year. they did year. it recently. How much did go. DART move the asteroid? Presumably it's something it, to do like, with... It's literally like less than a meter or something like that. But it's enough to they're take just, they're it. They're just trying to measure it course. to see if they can... No, no, no. Well, not necessarily. for the, the... Come on, Brent. Did you actually read this? Are you just making shit up? No, it is. It's, it, even yeah. if it only moves at a slight amount, it depends how early you get it. But it's a butterfly in effect. In theory, you can, yeah, it's just like it's it would miss. It's a butterfly effect. Yeah, it's like a butterfly effect. Yeah, exactly. like a butterfly effect. You yeah. move an asteroid when a couple of inches and climate change is solved <laughs> <laughs> on Earth. Yeah, and butter, butterflies True. spawn on asteroids and stuff like that. Anyway, I don't know all of the answers, but, you know, that's the job of the it's scientific not how community. how it works, Bala. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. But they, the, it was a test, so they're not really, like moving it they're not displacing it too like super hard they they're say it's a test seeing, they say it's a test they but they just stopped us all from dying. And measuring really 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 tiny movement just right. to see if they could do it okay now okay. in the future they know they can they can fucking shoot a massive rocket at the thing and it'll actually move enough to displace its course okay. or they could ask ask they could ask astra because to suck it off the course <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that that would. Yeah. She's been nerfed, but she'd probably still be good for that. Dude, the new character has special magic abilities. You want us to get onto that topic? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about it then. Uh, Brent's still hosting, even from this position. All right, there was a new agent trailer that dropped. Um, Harbor using uh, water magic and all sorts of stuff. It, it looks like maybe I'm reading into it too much, but it looks like shielding has been added to the game as in like walls and stuff that you can't shoot through um he's supposed to be a controller there's a cool agent trailer where oh he's being chased on motorbikes and he throws a little explosive device behind him do you know what 
just want to say real quick. Yeah. This trailer was so predictable. I don't know if anybody else felt the same way. I was watching it at the beginning, and I'm like, he's going to get betrayed by his partner. Mm, I can I, feel it in my fucking bones. I actually didn't even get that vibe. I think you're just too smart. Yeah, I'm. people have that. I People say that about me. Here's what I don't get. The, the beginning of the trailer, he's got this artifact on his wrist. And Does then he? later in the trailer... Flashback. Oh, that's a... Yeah. Well, I've misunderstood the entire chronology. Did, <laughs> he can also time chase. travel. <laughs> After oh. this chase, he like falls off a cliff and he's like, this has been a shit week. And then it cuts back to where he got. Oh, yeah, it did. So that's him being chased by his partner then. Uh, oh, is well, that why yeah, his I... partner's company? Yeah. Is that why I thought that he oh, was there he is. Yeah, that's his, that's his partner. Yeah, you literally saw the betrayal happening. <laughs> then there was a flashback and you were like, I bet he gets betrayed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nice, sorry. Man. Holy shit. It's just too I didn't even register right that there. in my brain. I thought it was all chronological for some reason. I don't know why. So did I. I don't even... <laughs> I mean, we are the worst. We are the worst podcast for law. Just the worst. I, did, I made a cliff notes of the video in the run of show if you want to read it real no, quick. No, I've watched the video. I just got it wrong entirely. Yeah. It, I thought it was a very well done video, personally. Yeah, mm. but he got betrayed. Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, he's going to get betrayed by his partner. I've seen it before. Well, I was a little disappointed. Don't they normally come with gameplay too at the end? Or what's the, is that the next video or what's going That's on? That's the next video usually. Yeah, but I'm I thought sure it was. they do like two separate ones. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm. But honestly, I... watching this, this, you guys won't appreciate this, but I was watching this and I'm like, they literally made this exact same cinematic before in League of Legends. I'm not joking. Like from this cave scene, like Ezreal <laughs> and Kaisa are two characters in League of Legends and they walk into a cave like this and there's a teardrop like item on the thing. Ezreal picks it up, slaps it on his wrist and then starts blasting people. There's no betrayal, <laughs> but it's like this literal exact same scene. I've seen this before. That's so, so lazy uh, from Riot, just yeah. reusing all of their assets. Yeah, yeah I, I mean. can't believe they came up with the ancient artifact in a cave trope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, they they perfected it by the second try at least yeah yeah i thought this i thought this was good though i i think it's a it's an interesting one it's an indian agent as well right the, yeah. this thing's this particular trailer set in mumbai um that's, that's pretty sick. finally an agent for yay and fns <laughs> <laughs> yeah and aaron now as well right yep i mean aaron's gonna be picking up this player uh this uh agent this, this is the part though where it looks like Bullets can't go through his walls, mm -hmm. which yeah. is kind of crazy. How yeah, does water it looks like stop a, bullets. Like a like a temporary sage wall. And this, this I mean, is a fucking literally wow bubble. Like on the bubble, let's go for the raid. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. This looks a bit bonkers. I'm not exactly I think sure that's how. That's a third ability right there. I, right? I don't like, even understand what that is though. Well, it looks like it's just a bubble that you can't shoot through, can't shoot into. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Not this, you, this, uh, I, think this I get that. Sense. I don't get the next one. What, this what, one? Is, what is this just, doing? I, I, He's just having I, fun with a bunch of guys. <laughs> 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 He's at the fucking splash park. <laughs> it's a wave pool. I, I think it's just like a, another form of a, you know, like a displacement ability, like a grab ball or something like that. Is it like a slow? It doesn't look like they're being slow. Oh, maybe. Maybe they're but being It's like chased. on their legs. It's possible. Yeah. I think it's pulling them. Like uh, Kurt, enhance. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wait, they're on Haven. Kurt, zoom, enhance. Oh, that is Haven. You're right. That doesn't. I mean, they've run a long way. They're behind Haven, actually, because yeah, like that's where a, a CT spawn is. They're cheating. This. <laughs> <laughs> and then we assume this one's supposed yeah. to be his alt, though, right? I would. I would think. What is this? I don't remember this. Uh, is that a disc. I don't really know what this is. I don't. I like the theory though that this could be like Molly Denial, um, like because uh, it's like on the ground and stuff. You know how you can like smoke out Molly's and stuff and see. But there's no way his ult is gonna be Molly Denial. That's way too weak as an ult. No, this to me looks like a whirlpool. This to me looks like a big like AOE suck, like a really guessing, large AOE suck. I'm guessing that's the bubble falling at some point. The the bubble what? Falling. Like, once the bubble ends, then... Well, no, because he's doing a different down. animation. Yeah, he's... Hands. Friend, this is a cinematic. I mean, no, no, I get no, that no. he's throwing his ult. I get this that. This is his ult. 100%. Cause his Here's ult. my theory. It's oh. a water pool, and if he throws it on top of fire, it not only do it increases the amount of damage and also flashes the people. So he synergizes <laughs> with Brimstone and Phoenix. 
<laughs> That's my theory. What? Can you imagine if they actually, this is their first step to adding like serious agent Energies? synergy into the game? Holy fuck. Like when you run this guy, he's mad buffed if you run him with Phoenix or Brim. Oh, no. <laughs> Literally, Ars Magica, like the fucking, <laughs> all the different spells combined. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that, that, weirdly, I don't think there have been any leaks that I've seen of the ability descriptions. Normally at this point, there's like some leak from the training range and it's all in Russian and, you know, we, we know what... Wasn't it? No, there was ability. one ages ago. Was it? Yeah, with the code name Mage, wasn't it? Oh, was, yeah. that, was that this guy? But, I didn't I think even realize. So. There were, I think the only one that got really right from the trailer is the wall. Other than that, I don't think that they got it correct. I've got to be honest, because, I can't even remember because what that was. the leak came out, and then instantly everybody was like, oops, my bad, this is a fake leak. And then now we have this, and it's mm. like, yeah, okay, it was partly right. Mm. Okay. Well, anyways. Seems cool. Yeah. Seems pretty cool. No. I, uh, I actually did stumble across the designer of Harbor. I, was, I, was, I walked to a cafe. I, I frequent... Uh, and uh, I was I was I was getting there, and then I ran into an old playtest buddy of mine. He was having lunch with the designer, so uh, the only thing I know because he didn't leak anything to me, unfortunately. You guys, you guys thought I was ready to drop. Him <laughs> yeah, I thought you were. No, it was yeah. no. All I know is that he also he did the the jet and brimstone like mini updates. So that's, but I think this is his first like full agent. So that'll be interesting. Hmm. Sweet. Yeah. What if the old right is like um a gulag? Like it locks yeah. someone into a 1v1. It, it traps you in a water bubble and you must 1v1 whoever you trap. Yeah, whoever beats it, then they get a buff. Yeah, that's, water. A, that's a great idea. That is a aren't really guys, good idea. Aren't you guys terrified about walls that cannot be penetrable? Like, uh, I but mean, it's I'm a little scared isn't it? here. Everything's temporary. This is a. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> We are but a speck in the realm of existence. <laughs> All life is temporaneous. This, this what do you is mean? A, a multiple time around potentially astral. Like that seems kind of busted, no? Well, I I don't know. I feel like we've said the same thing about other mechanics in the game that have just ended up no, being balanced because of how like where their downside is. Like for example, if it was thrown like a phoenix wall, where you have to be close to it and it only extends a certain distance, it's not as bad, but I suppose, I suppose at that point it's just like kind of a sage wall. I mean, a sage wall does the same thing, right? It blocks yeah. bullets. But you can't stand yeah. on it and it disappears. You also you can't, can't block push through like, utility with it. I mean, maybe. We don't know you yeah, can't we block don't utility, know that, right? Sure, sure. But, um, lose, yeah. I would imagine though, because I think like Riot, and they've said this before with like new agents and stuff, that they are going to like somewhat recycle abilities. Like Fatal oh, is to, the right? same like implementation of a breach ult. Just like the effect that it does is different. Um, so I imagine that there are going to be like a lot of similar things like this in the future where you have like repeat where like, okay, Astral blocks things off. I imagine that the way it'll be implemented, if Harbor also has this blocking mechanic, it'll be the same thing where it just blocks bullets. It won't block utility. So in that sense, like, yes, it's super strong for like holding for like a diffuse and a post plant, but in the same vein, you can Sage Wall, but now like Sage Wall is also good because it can like stop Viper Mollies from coming mm. in. So I think like there are like gives, uh, like po positives and negatives. Yeah, yeah. If he can't stop Viper Mollies, he'll have to headbutt them away. That'll be his post plan um, <laughs> kind of gameplay. Where, where do you reckon he ranks from Yoru to Chamber in terms of oh. playability here? In terms of being... Is it control? Or, or maybe, maybe we should say from, from Yoru to peak Astra. He's supposed to have, <laughs> supposed to have smokes. Yeah, he's, he's a controller. I, I don't know whether he has smokes or whether it's just a wall. We do, I don't think we know at this point, right? But mm. I would assume he has some kind of smoke. Maybe that maybe that's what the the you know the what you said he was just splashing oh. around with five guys. <laughs> maybe that was the smoke. It's like a water wall. I don't know. Where do you reckon he? What, what do you reckon? Hot take. We don't know enough to He's say. The most but... overpowered character that's ever been introduced into the game. <laughs> right now, I'm telling you right now. When this gets launched, we're all gonna be like, holy shit. Mm. It's gonna read. Every, oh. If you're not running a harbor, you're fucking throwing. That's my yeah. theory. That's that's I'm i um, low key agreeing because with Brent here, and this is the school and he's, of game. He's dev. doing a hot take and shit, but no, nah, bro. The school of game development: you start high and work your way lower. That hasn't, but but that hasn't tracked with Valorant so far. Yes, it has. With what? Rays, Sage, and Astra? Is that it? Uh, who are you missing? Chamber? 
Yeah, wait, uh, hey, who else are you missing? Saying? You're missing like tons. I no, swear no, to no, God. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, sorry. What are we even ranking here? Why did you say so, Sage? I did not. Yeah, why did you say saying... Sage? Sage was in the game from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like character. agents that started out extremely good and had to be nerfed heavily. That's what I'm trying to rank. Right. There's, there's like only four. like two uh, agents where they had to buff them. Dude, there's tons Which was, of agents like, where they had to buff them. Yoru and Ko. Okay, All they right. had to buff. All they right. had to buff. Um, they had to buff Ko. They had to buff Yoru. They had to buff uh, Breach. They had to buff uh, Jet. They had to buff Phoenix at some point. Guy. Right. No, they, they had to nerf Jet later, though. Yeah, they yeah. had to nerf her afterwards, but they had to buff her from where she began. The, but that's a also a player issue. Like, that's actually a user issue in Jet's case, because Jet is objectively worse now than she was on release. Yes. Doesn't matter. But she's, it's like, data. way more popular okay. now but, because people, and also, like, got better. I'm just going to say, you, you, you're, you're bringing up this point. If you bring up the list again, Kurt, yeah. you're, you're talking, like, you're bringing up agents that they have playtested for presumably years while the game was in development. Okay, so let's look at the newer ones. Yeah. KO, they had to buff. Yep. Yoru, they had to buff. Yeah, and that's, that's it. Astra Chamber, they had to nerf. Sky was kind of just fine no. on release. Yes. No, no, no. Sky she had did... to be buffed. What are you talking about? They fucking literally buffed the pullout time of the gun, and then all yeah, of a sudden they buffed the oh, yeah, time. They added yeah, three right. flashes. Okay, like, so Sky this, was bad. This theory has fallen to pieces before my eyes. <laughs> but start high, work your way down. That's the fucking school. You, that's, the, that's what I'm... Okay, he's no, gonna that's be, fine. He's I broken. You, I asked you for a hot take. That's fine. Ender, where, where do you fall? Uh, I, well, I think the important thing, like, if, if Harbor is a controller, I don't think there's, like, one controller that, like, outclasses others. So it'd be different if you were coming in and releasing, like, a Sentinel right now when Chamber is, like, widely popular. But there are not a lot of controller agents, so I imagine that Harbor is just going to be, like, insanely popular, especially early on and strong. Um, primarily because, like, there's nothing, like, a few months ago when, like, Astra, or longer than a few months, but, like, Astra was, like, crediting everything out. Right now, like, Brim, Viper, Astra omen they're all like sort of playable there's different maps they're like a little bit stronger on um so the only question to me is because i think controllers more than other agents like thinking viper in particular like is very strong on like icebox breeze because of her wall um so depending on how in line harbor is with like is he a wall agent is he like a, a normal like smoker with like two three orbs um that'll sort of de determine what maps he's going to be good on like controllers are more than any other agent class i think are more hard bound specific map types because of like how choke points work and whatnot i i like that point and i want to i want to throw this one forwards i feel like this agent would be so cool if he actually wasn't that powerful but he could wall and do remote smokes so he, he has like a bit of both you know so he could yeah. he could wall you out into breeze but he's also mostly going to be using his normal smokes but maybe he has like one small wall around that you could use for something like that I think that would be cool because uh, Viper in some sense has that, but you can't throw her smoke very well because you need fucking There's TikTok lineups in order to get it to proper bots. So you can't just remote place them. Um, he's also fucking gorgeous. Can we all, can we all agree? <laughs> can we okay, all agree? I got a bone to pick. I got yes. a bone to pick. With yeah, I've got games. a fucking bone to pick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. But you go first. Okay, look. He is objectively hot, but like... Riot, can we stop releasing dads as characters? <laughs> like, I want, I want to play. I want to play like a young gun. Like this is so boring. Like it's just beard after beard after beard. I'm growing tired of her. It's stale. It's played out. I need diversity with my male champions. I'm sorry. Uh, well, also, they released Yoru and Chamber before him. I yeah. believe they were the last two male agents. Yeah, but like. No, no, but I don't know. Oh. Something about them. They're all dads. I'm sorry. It's just, it's Chamber, how it I mean, is. Chamber might be a dad of unknown, and he acts like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 there's a possibility there. Chamber looks like someone that doesn't go outside. I, I feel like, what about I feel Silver? like Phoenix is exactly. Phoenix the, is a dad. He's like one of the oldest agents. I mean, Phoenix is such a youth. Phoenix is a yeah. youth from the, the London youthful. block. And how long ago did he come out? Oh, what? He's aged since then, has he? <laughs> <laughs> also, on this show, we've got fucking Zuma versus actual father, not Brent. I no, mean, no, who me. knows if no, Brent, but, but Bala on the other end. Bala, are you tired of playing as a father? Do you want to escape your real life and <laughs> try and play as a Zuma instead and recapture some of that lost youth? No, I'm not deep enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> My body hasn't come oh in yet. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> you know, dads are in right now. They're very hot. Yeah? Thank you. <laughs> Is that why you're growing that mustache, huh? 
No, but the this is my brand now. Oh, right. Do you know I got recognized in rank the other day as the mustache guy? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that's that's the, pretty good. That's the brand now. It's a good brand. It's a good brand. It's better than mine, which is bald, which is literally to like to fucking ten people. Are you the bald guy or the oh. mustache guy? Are you the bald guy? Oh, which bald guy? Oh, the bald white guy. <laughs> no, they're all bald white guys. <laughs> they should Can we definitely add, bald add a plus mustache. Yeah, yeah, they need to add a bald mustache guy. Make him Italian or something. Yeah, like, fucking put Humpty Dumpty in the game, Riot. You won't. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's move on to talking about some Valorant competitive kind of stuff, huh? The big news that rocked the world, I think, um, this week was the whole loud Sentinels kind of crazy shit. So Sentinels are set to sign Sassy and Pancada, which is bonkers. I had no idea that people would even be looking at Pancada less um, and Aspas, honestly, because... I wasn't really aware of what their English levels would be like to join a, a, an English-speaking team. But yeah, Sentinel's set to sign two out of five of these loud players is crazy. I mean, Sentinels are really going from zero to 100. That We didn't know anything about this team a week ago, and now they've got a fucking crazy squad, honestly. Like, yeah. in terms of name value, this is crazy. Yep. I think it's pretty sweet, to be honest, as well. You get a veteran presence of Sassy. Pancada's like one of the best controller players in the game at the moment. So, especially with, with teams just seemingly... I don't, we don't know where Marv is going or if Marv is even going to get picked up, weirdly enough. Um, so, Pancada, I think, in my mind, automatically goes to the second, the second best or the best. <laughs> this, this is old beef. This is old what? December Why 2021 is beef. There? Why is this in the article? Because uh, it's, it's thought... dredging up past beef between the org and, like... Yeah, the anyway. The, it, Maybe Loud pickups. will sign Zoms. <laughs> yeah, they should sign Zoms as do, a six do player. Do a swap. <laughs> <laughs> send Loud Zoms to Zoms. Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fuck it hell. But I, I mean, Pagata's like the best controller player, I think, in the Americas right now, if, if not the second best. Um, definitely up there. And you're building Marv. it with the, uh, with the kind of top-down perspective of you've got good coaching staff as well with... Now you've got Don and, uh, and Kaplan. Yeah. So Don being psycho, but we're on a first name basis because we're cool like that. We're tight like that. <laughs> so I saw some people asking, who is Don? Because we just kept calling psycho Don. Yeah. Who is he? <laughs> one of the great mysteries of our time. Uh, he, play, he worked with Exet, so actually no one knows who he is. Um, and uh, Bala, is this team looking cracked or do you have concerns about how they're going to integrate these pieces. What's your what's your gut feeling off the bat? So I think this team is cracked, but what about my boy Dapper? Like, that's the real take here. Like, I'm actually so confused. And I actually, okay, here's what my theory was. I have no inside information. My theory is they wanted Dapper as a sixth man, right? I presume with the way the the like agent selection is going to go is that Zekin is going to be on duelist and then you have tens is going to be on just absolute chamber duty but i also think kaplan i i, I think kaplan thinks about the the game in a certain way to me in the sense um with like all the the rays uh fade stuff okay. earlier on my theory is that we already saw at champions that chamber was sort of falling off in terms of popularity all around i think they what unironically they legitimately wanted Dapper to be a sixth man um, for certain maps that they weren't going to be running Chamber on. Um, yeah. Because I, I like I actually they think they were going to try and do a real six man roster, and Dapper just unfortunately didn't want to do it. Um, but yeah. I'm just I'm actually I think Dapper is the better player. Uh, if you want to go for a Sentinel slot for that last one, I think he's way more versatile than a Tens, who's like pretty much on Chamber duty. And I'm curious if they can get Tens to play more more agents because that'll yeah. be the difference maker. Well, I think that's part of the reason why Ten's deal hasn't been locked up yet. Because while he is a massive asset in terms of you know popularity and stuff like that, um, he actually isn't that flexible on a duelist role. His raise has been an area where he struggled compared to the other people at the top of the scene. And his chamber, he started playing more of it and looked a lot more comfortable at the end. But that's he's kind of getting good at it as the agent seems to be dropping off a bit. But I think even if you take that roster, that like the the one without Dapper. You can still make that work in a non-chamber meta because you'd shift Zekin over to Initiator, which he's been amazing at too, and you'd put Tens back on the entry and uh, Def, in fact, would move on to Sentinel. So they, they have but, working around that. It's just that then you run into the issue of 
Tens is not as comfortable on the raise stuff if that's where the meta ends up going compared to yeah and that was that was gonna be my concern is that tens i like think like you have the jet but again how many maps are you still playing jet on ascent or not not, i mean ascent breeze are like the two big ones maybe an ice box um so yeah i think that i i would have really liked to see a team with a ton of flexibility and i think you get that with a player like zekin that can play duelist and initiator which is why i think dapper would make a lot of sense because you can play all the all the different sentinels um but uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I think this would have actually been the sickest and an actually effective six-man roster. Um, well, while we're and, on the topic, yeah. though, Barlow, I want to ask you, do you think Dapper will get offers elsewhere? Do you think he's a valuable player to pick up? Because to me, I, I do agree, he's a super valuable sixth player. He's actually you know, played a bit of the fade. He's played some of the hard sentinel role. There aren't that many hard sentinel players. There's like Mitch, who just got released from C9, who like Whippy played it in the past. And Dapper, there's really a dearth of those players in North America. Do you think Dapper ends up kind of going back to Sentinels and realizing that it's a, a good opportunity or does he find a starting spot somewhere? Yeah, I I was thinking about that a lot because obviously they offered him that role. I, I think that it's going to be really tough to find a spot somewhere else just because of the meta we're at right now. Um, unless coaches are thinking really long term and uh, you know whether Chamber will get changed or whatnot. And obviously Champs was a little bit of a, a show that Chamber will kind of fall out of favor but even still when when you're making these teams you're thinking of who's our out player and most of the time it's going to be taking up a sentinel role so it's really hard i think for all of those guys that you mentioned to find space i think on a on a starting roster um when you have such prolific oppers who are playing the, the chamber role at the same time i don't think so but he's good enough that he he could he could I think for most of the time, though, he's going to stick on to Sentinels. That's my prediction. So just focusing on the Brazilian component of this team, though, I'm concerned a little bit in terms of how they're going to integrate Pancada. I think they said that his English is uh, pretty good, like serviceable enough to work on a mixed language roster. I know Sassy yeah. is, for all, for all intents and purposes, he's just fluent, right? He's just, yeah. you can just talk to him and you wouldn't know that he would struggle with it at all. He tends to do most of the interviews in Portuguese, but... It, could very easily do them in English. He's excellent in English. Pancada, I don't know as much about, and I think they had said during one of these articles that he's like almost there. Do you see any problems arising as a result of that? Is it, is it potentially an issue there? I think it's offset by Sassy being in the roster, isn't it? Ever so slightly. It helps with the, uh, the transition period. You know? Sure. Um, because if it was just Pancada, then yeah, because... From what I've seen in the past of when you try and get mixed rosters together in terms of language barriers is that you often need like a translator and then there's issues with the translator not understanding the game and translating game terms. And then there is difficulty there. There's like obstacles put in place. But if you have somebody who is, you know, able to speak both languages in the team already and they're able to, to you know, help Pankata adjust and learn, you know. Well, there, yeah, there are case, like cases of specifically a uh, North American English speaking roster Kind of merging with a brazilian roster in cs right there's been two instances One that i can think of off the top of my head mmbr with stewie um who went over there and then liquid with fallen and taco at some points as well and even had uh brazilian coaches portuguese coaches um in na teams as well in the past so they were never super super successful um and obviously a lot of those guys i think probably a little bit higher level english than pancada although again i've not spoken to pancada i don't actually know yeah. um but yeah, it's it's they they tended to be failed projects, except for the fallen liquid um, experiments. So they have to level up even higher than that, which Arvidi was really really top players. Do you see this? Also, oh, sorry, go on, Ada. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, I, I do also think that the like the agents do play into like communicating on the fly like when you actually get into the server in game because i think if you're trying to play like initiator duel or something like this where it requires like a lot of like pinpoint like micro micro coordination with your teammates whereas you're playing smokes primary things that you need to communicate is like cooldowns when smokes are going down etc etc um like there's less things you have to coordinate quickly uh so i actually think that with the the smokes role for pancada like there's actually far less concern than if it was a more like critical entry role uh for the team yeah that's an interesting point i mean most of the time actually the when we've seen mixed language rosters it is kind of some cracked superstar like korean jet on a japanese team or something where, where they do seem very out of sync when they're playing that that role so this is but going to be an interesting to, project 
you might be able to add like the alpha uh, on Fnatic project and and CNET as well on Ascend sure. back then too. I think those are all probably comparable. Sure, sure. Um, I also do want to mention though that it's super sad to see Sassy and Sadak split apart. Right, I yeah. think that was one of the big things that you were talking about last week when we were saying Loud had the potential of imploding, and that's that's not what's happened here. But um, the the duo there that's been together since the beginning of Valorant, and it's the you know the IGL and the initiator player that have gone through all of these different iterations of rosters and finally won a championship together, are going to be split up heading into next year. I suppose there's a, a somewhat interesting like rivalry there, but it's not really a rivalry. It's like just they they were playing together as a duo. I'm sad that they're going to be split up. This was one of my favorite storylines to follow. Yeah, it's it sucks, um, but we do get that opportunity to to see, you know, the Pippin versus Jordan type of type of thing down the line, which could be cool. Who knows? Um, I'm curious as to who. I'm thinking. Uh, obviously, we have a topic about Loud in the future, but I'm just like thinking about the level of both of the teams and the level of both Sasi and Sadak, and who like has the potential to have the better year. And I don't think I can put my finger on it because Sassy, I was looking through his stats, man. He is still one of the guys who provides the most value and just like doesn't die almost ever. And it's really fantastic. Um, so, by the way, Sentinels fans who are fucking confused right now, probably they're like, where's, where's Shazam? Uh, Sassy is 100% like the, the guy you should be cheering for. This guy is insane. So, yeah, don't you so worry, Sentinels fans. Sassy Cloud is still there. He, him coming in as well though does offset some of my fears about Sentinels of um, them just having Def as their IGL. I think I know Sassy's not an IGL, but he is like a, he's a pretty you know he's the veteran presence that you can bring into a team that's going to be able to. Um, well, one thing I notice is with such a wrong uh, young roster with Exet when they were running Def as their primary IGL and Aaron wasn't taking the reins on it, you had rounds where they just looked lost at times. When, when it either a high pressure round, high pressure scenario or something, and just look, you could tell that whatever whatever the game plan was, it just wasn't being either followed or there was there just wasn't a game plan being called properly. I know it's hard to judge IGL from the outside in because we're literally not listening to it, but it definitely felt like I mean you can just see in the results itself there was a clear step up in Xset's level when Aaron also took on some of the responsibilities of IGLing, and so I was worried with Def going back to that full time that you'd see almost you know. A bit of a, a step back in maybe the, the potential of the team. But Sassy coming in, I think, offsets that to a, a pretty decent degree because he's mad experience. He's played in almost every tournament, I think. Yeah, um, four out of five. Yeah, four out of five when it comes to the global events. So the guy's oh, got experience. Five out of six, sorry. Guy's got experience for days, um, which, which gives me a bit of peace of mind when I saw that this roster was. Was coming together because that was one thing that I was going to be holding against the Sentinels roster going into next year. Mm. Uh, Kurt has found Sassy's announcement on TikTok and apparently it's very entertaining. So I want to yeah. take a look. Sorry, that was the weird noises that was coming through. I was trying to cue it, it up, playing. but I was just playing really loud <laughs> sounds at the start. So Don't TikTok, what are you talking about? Yeah, they made a. I don't know if this is necessarily an announcement video, but this is uh, what they posted on TikTok. <laughs> Want to know how to pleasure a woman? No. <laughs> That's it. There you go. Nice. Wow. That's the announcer wow. video. No, it can't be. That's got Sadak's name in it. That's that's wow. just a random loud TikTok. <laughs> That's, that's on the Sentinels funny. TikTok account. That's, that's content. A, that's on Sentinels. Yeah. That's got Sadak in there. If you look at... Yeah, but if the you look dart at little... Sassy's name, bro. Oh, the lineup. Oh, is that <laughs> the idea? Want to know how to pleasure a woman? <laughs> no. <laughs> it has a Sentinels thing. <laughs> oh, what I did she say at the beginning? I don't... I don't... Want to know how to pleasure a woman? And then Sober <laughs> says... And Sober says... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Oh, fuck. I've got uh, I've got one more question before we move on from this topic. This team is a bit of a blend of like Exet and Loud, right? The four players that are actually on the team at the moment is like two from Exet and two from Loud, and they they're gone together. And then we don't know exactly whether Tens is still going to be there. Is this roster 
better than the old Exet roster? First of all, would you expect them if they went into a tournament to finish higher than the former Exet roster? Let's assume Tens is on the squad as well. Is this roster better than Exet? I'm going to ask you the same question about Loud as well if you want to start considering that too. It, is the blend better than the original teams that they have combined? A hundred percent. On paper, a hundred percent. I mean, just the players, you look at them, 100%. I think what made Exit really good was time and the sum of everybody. And we cannot tell that right now for Sentinels. Uh, but I think if I was to look at, you know, e even now that I have my perception of Zekin and Cryo and all these guys like slightly higher after their champions run, if I look at them and then I look at Pancada, Sasi, Zekin, tens, like 100%, the skill level is better. Are you there? Uh, I don't know. I because uh, let me think. Let me dwell on this. <laughs> okay, we'll get back to you. <laughs> Do you have an answer me. for me, Ender? Or is it um, only Bala? It might just be. Honestly, I, I I think I agree with Bala. I would say that uh, there's so many new pieces here at play that I think it's really really hard to say with uh, the mixed language roster and then honestly just tens. What will he look like next year? Because he has had wildly inconsistent, I think, from like day to day. Um, so I don't know. Like, I, I feel like Exet were like so consistent in a way that like you knew exactly what you were going to get from them. Like they were they, they were getting better uh, over time, but like expectations, they never like really blew out of the water. Um, even when they even when they were able to qualify uh, for the last internationals this year. Um, like, I think that was, like, a, a grind they were working towards. Um, so I think it's very hard to say, but I, I do agree on paper this team is better. Um, but I wouldn't just, like, go out and say, like, yeah, this team is going to be, like, top three NA. They're going to be making internationals every single time, uh, okay. like Exet did at the end of the year. M maybe the kind of thing where they'll be better in the long term because the on-paper value is better, but short term, they'll just have to work I would, through some I stuff. I would actually, I would argue against that. I'd say that this this roster, like, if you... If you well, this is their worst, right? right? Where they probably will start, and this is their best, their peak. X sets more like this, whereas this Sentinels roster just starts a little higher, but it's much smaller in my mind. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I would say either this roster works or it doesn't. It's yeah. not like a, over time they're going to like become much better. Uh, like either they're going to come in and they're going to be exceptionally good, or it is not going to work at all, and they're going to wish they had that. Right? I, I want to ask but you the same question about the loud. No, I want to ask you the I same question opinion. about the loud roster as you well. You can't. Why? Because I've come up with my opinion oh, on the Sentinels. Oh, go on then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll the, go on to the loud uh, topic after this question. At minimum, they are at the same level of the Exit squad, I think. Right. Because I think Enders Brook brings up a really good point about Tens. We don't really know what he's going to be looking like next year. I think Tens has always been kind of done dirty by the team environment he's been in. Okay. He's definitely been a good player. But would you say that he is on the same level or better than cryo i wouldn't say so no i would i think cry i no. would say cryo was a better player i think the controller position is being upgraded to a degree just when pie has individual ability compared to someone like yeah. aaron for example but um bcj i mean where would you compare bcj with whoever's going to be playing the initiator Sassy. on, I mean, Sassy, on this team yeah. like Sassy. i mean I, I i wouldn't i wouldn't say that Sassy's an upgrade of no, bcj no. necessarily i think bcj's yes, performance at champions was pretty comparable but i think all time sassy has been a better player and um yeah i, I think so that i would, think i think these two are upgrades yeah but funny i, how I think he was just not in the conversation when the bcj best initiator thing happened like Sassy was just not in that conversation at all fucking wild yeah, yeah. i mean he did Stacks. he did play terribly at that tournament as well though sassy yeah, uh, copenhagen true. was shit in the bed as bad as bcj was <laughs> <laughs> But I think if you if you if you run the numbers and you put it all together and you get like a mathematicians on board and shit, you you probably they they're probably saying like yeah, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, what <laughs> some breaking? What are we news. using your Bill Bre Belichick buddy? Budget, I have breaking right? news: the face of all caps Valorant, a system built around him at Ten's official is here to stay. Two minutes ago. Oh, okay. So Whoa. Sentinel's yeah, official. The, right there we go. So the assumptions of Ten staying, it's it's done. It's sealed. All right. That's, that's pretty cool. But it also does bring up all of those same questions about like, let, let's just for a moment then, 
Is Tens going to become a much better player by playing in this squad compared to the previous Sentinels? Would you expect him under the tutorship, if you want to call it like that, of Def and Sassy to become the player that people have expected him to be? Yeah, I, well, I don't even think that it's necessarily Def and Sassy. I mean, sure, them playing um, will help because, you know, the executions are going to be really good in the server, but I just think a really, really fucking solid coaching staff where you actually put build a game plan uh, around tens not necessarily just around tens but around the entire team and uh whatnot is something that tens has not worked in before i think that's to brent's point that yeah 100 percent with with psycho and kaplan for sure what the one of the reasons that i brought up those two plays in particular though is because both of them have experience actually helping younger talents and any experienced talents yeah, get to the top really good point. zek and cryo started from being very rough raw players developed well, into superstars and the, the same with Aspas. He was just a rank demon, developed into an incredibly good player. And yeah, but here's the thing. None of them play with the same, like, mistakes in their game, to the same degree, at least, as Tens yeah. has demonstrated. And that's that's where I think the coaching is is more important in this aspect, because Tens is not, a, I mean, yes, he is a rank demon, but he's he's had years of experience, right? This isn't a young guy. This is a guy who's the face of Valorant, right? This is a guy who has an ego, who has to eventually end up being coachable uh, where I don't think he's even gotten really the chance to to be coached in that degree you know so I I, I don't I don't think it's the same with Def and yeah uh, he's and saucy I, I think they look they come into this team and they look at him and it's it's different right it's like wow you're the you're one of the best players that Valorant has produced Ten, Tens is That's still tell, Tens is still clay that could be molded but it's been left out for a few years and now it's got a little dry <laughs> compared to the nice wet clay that they were working with previously yeah. look if, if the coaching staff can unlock the secret of how to get Tens to actually perform in the first game of a best of three as opposed to just the last two they will have uncorked <laughs> unlimited potential i don't know how you do it i don't know if he needs to wake up a little bit earlier get a few more scrims on in the morning get some breakfast however you're gonna make it happen just please figure out how to let this man get kills in a game one hmm. and then also People used to say that about him in game three as well. <laughs> so, so take game two and expand. <laughs> um, let's, let's go on to the Loud discussion, I think, because the other half of this with Sassin Pancada is that Loud are not completely disbanding their roster. They are sticking with the core of players that didn't go to Sentinels. They still have that trio of Sadak, Aspas, Les that they're building around. Um, but I, I want to start this conversation by asking the same question here. That Sentinels team, or this Loud team, are either of them in a position where they could get better than where Loud previously was? Or is Loud just kind of, you know, the, the peak that you wouldn't be able to surpass for next year? Uh, are, we, well, are those Loud players it, always going on to worse teams? This is kind of unfair, though, because we don't actually have the full roster here from Loud, just to be... We, we, all we know is Les Sadak and Aspas. And yeah, is it possible, though? Is it possible to make... Yes. A team. 100 percent yes um number one i think these guys are experienced enough that they uh, sadak is going to be enough they don't need more veterans on the team they just i mean if you add a little bit more firepower to this roster you fucking less was the breakout player of champions almost certainly aspas was fucking demonic in champions and in, in the grand final specifically um and then sadak has proven that he's one of the best IGLs in the world i, I think you still have that three core. This team could still go crazy, um, and I wouldn't even I wouldn't even really change their trajectory that far away from where they where they would be with Sasha and Pancada. I think Sadai is one of the best players in the world as well. Let's throw that out there. <laughs> yeah, he's like actually though. Like if you look at th Bren's, uh, three Bren's agents, top five: Sadak, Boaster, Sadak, fucking just Sadak again, and fifth Sadak. <laughs> Just put him in the top five. No, nah, but I think he was one of the, like, um, when, when it was coming out that Loud might be disp disbanding, I was like, I think Sadak might be the one, of the one of the top free agents, if not the top free agent coming into the scene because he puts up unreal numbers, plays a variety of roles, and he does it from an IGL position. It's like the perfect package of what you'd want in a player to build a new roster around and build a new team around. 100 so, Thieves were apparently looking at him as well. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that because, it, you know, he's, uh, he's a pretty pretty sick player. 
um, all around. And I'm I'm pleased that Loud are building around Sadak, and then you've got Aspas and Less as well. I think this is more than enough as a core to build around. Um, if you want to continue, especially with the rumors that the what the coach of Loud might also be owner, I guess. Yeah, I don't, but I don't know, know that's, if that's true. I don't think that's necessarily so much a rumor that's been like leaked or reported by anyone as like just conjecture from what has been tweeted. Yeah, we're literally reading the fucking tea leaves. Yeah, of of tweets and just <laughs> assuming. But <laughs> just, if it does end up happening, then it it would be you've got a top coach also alongside them. But yeah, I think that this core is 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 more than enough to build around. They they they've already proven that they've got the skill and Sadak. I rate super highly as a player, so, yeah. I think the team, like, surely expectations for this team should be high. Like, this this team should be good with the core. Um, but I've also just seen too many times where, like, you take a championship roster and even just one, like, piece changes, and then it's just never the same. And, and it doesn't get back to the same height. So I, it's a very different conversation to Sentinels because Sentinels, like, expectations were on the floor, and now they're like, oh, they might actually have a good team. They stole all these players from Loud. Um... But for me, looking at this loud team, yeah, looking to compete towards the top end, but hard to say that they'll actually get back to uh, the, the same level, uh, like a first place international level um, that they were previously. And we'll have to wait and see what the, the two players are for that. Do you have any ideas about who would be good players to fit these gaps? Do you think they should go in the same direction of Sentinels and make a, you know, uh, I assume it would be English speaking, but I suppose that's kind of making assumptions. Maybe they'll take North American players and they'll learn Portuguese, but I think that'll be a little more difficult. Um, yeah, but I, I would say I just don't know enough about the Brazilian scene, um, like the the players outside the top teams, to like have an informed opinion on what like a Brazilian roster would look like. Um, like I'm partial to Marv. Where is he gonna find? Where is he gonna end up? Uh, like if you are trying to to mix it up, but um. Yeah, yeah I, I I just don't know enough about the the. I, scene. I would throw Cowan Zine's name in there potentially from NIP, right? Uh, I don't know what his status is or anything like Wasn't that. Wasn't Cowan Zine playing like the flex role, not the hard initiator role? Wasn't he? Yeah, I thought he was playing. Maybe he was. I, Maybe I, I'm I swear he was playing full initiator, know. but either but, way, it doesn't really matter because he was a prompt, like he was good sure. on the initiator role, no matter what. Uh, young player as well. That's that's like the first guy that comes to my mind, but that's about it. I was thinking Khalil, the the smokes player for Furia. Yeah, uh, he yeah sure. He's a bit more passive than Pancada was, but I think you know you, you had the duo on Loud where Sassy was extremely safe in the way that he played, whilst continuing to get a lot of value. That is kind of the way that Khalil plays, but from the smokes role. So if you got a more aggressive smokes player, you might still be able to get that same uh, synergy functioning, but. I thought Khalil was looking pretty good. He he is quite a passive player, but he's clearly talented. And yeah, I, I think potentially a, a decent pickup into that spot. Um, well, potentially yeah. also Fury is just going to keep him, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, I think louder in a position where it's not even a monetary thing, probably for the Brazilian players. It's like you could win a championship if you join this team. Uh, right. that, that's got to be a big pull. I mean, normally that's a bigger pull than money is. Yeah, probably. Um, I guess it depends what Fury is doing as well, but who knows like what the situation is right now because obviously the loud roster breaking up was about money. That's maybe not that. Maybe that's not obvious, but to me that makes the most sense. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'd actually guess that Sassi and Pancata going to Sentinels and getting probably a bag made it easier for the last three guys to get a bag. So who knows? Yeah, potentially, right? Because they, they have, yeah. That because they sense. don't want to lose their winning team. So they kind of have to throw it at them at that point. Yeah. Rather than trying to get them to capitulate. So Interesting. I mean, this is going to be the team that in theory is defending the championship. <laughs> yeah, maybe they, maybe they get Shroud. Uh, get Shroud. They, they've probably got the bag for Shroud, right? Yeah, I will pass him in the airport once and he was wearing a loud jersey. I think they're going to get Shroud. <laughs> the story's going to get more and more ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but does it make any sense to continue the narrative from champions that this team is defending whatever the trophy heading into Sao Paulo? Yeah. Yeah, I it's think so. Them. Like. Yeah, there's three of them. It's the it's the same org. Also, we're going to Brazil. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. come on. Like, it's got to be them defending. But yeah. also, like, there will be a little bit of, uh, like, the Sentinels, like, and their two players, like, 
quote unquote defending as well. Um, like there, there's going to be a little something there. God, which fucking cool. Sentinels always get their way into this shit, don't they? It's They've insane. bought their way into the storyline of being defending champions. They've hey, actually look, just bought you, a trophy. <laughs> if you can't beat them, buy them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk FPX, Navi, because there's uh, been a recent report that CNET is set to join Na'Vi to complete the FBX squad and fill in the gap that Ardis has left. Now, this comes in the back of there being rumors that Nuki was go- joining this mm. squad to fill that gap with Ardis, which I guess those rumors of that report was, I mean, it was a single tweet from somebody that does like leaking reporting kind of stuff, but presumably out of date unless they're doing a six-person roster with CNED and Nuki. I'm going to assume that it's kind of between the two of them rather than both being added. So I, w- I wanted to pitch this to you guys. Which one would be the better pickup, in your opinion, to fill that gap that Ardis has left? Would you go for CNED or would you go for Nuki? All other things being equal in terms of pay, etc. Hmm. The thing is, CNED's role fits much better in the spot that they want to put him in. Um, but I don't know if his personality fits FPX particularly which is what has me hesitant to say 100 percent cned because i wanted to i actually think nookie might fit very well in in fpx but his role is far and away oh, not what they want to be uh filling and, and by that you mean the, the chamber the jet mm-hmm. and the ko were the primary which nookie so. has played but it's like not not yeah. really right it's not his primary I mean, cned also hasn't played ko at all from what i can remember he played well, rain you know, and just Xbox figure ones. it out <laughs> yeah, those are quite similar. Those I are do remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, I I think um I feel like Nuki would be the better pickup. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like um I, I don't know, Nuki's just so fucking talented as a player and he was being forced into not forced, but I'm going to say forced. But he had to he had to pick up the mantle of IGLing, where it's pretty apparent that I don't think he wanted to be picking up that mantle of IGLing. And still was putting up ridiculous numbers. Still playing really well individually. Um, and I, I, I would feel pretty confident of him moving into any sort of role that the team needed. Um, and he's yep. the, the kind of personality thing that you were mentioning, Bala, as well. Do you mean that from the perspective of, like, Ardis is so outspoken that he was able to, you know, push back upon the angel influence? <laughs> like, just, <laughs> just from inside the team? Sure, yeah, but he's all... Uh, it's just, I don't know, maybe I'm continuing a bullshit narrative from G2 where... You know, it's he's more of an abrasive guy who wants to push for results. Who, you know, will be a little bit toxic to you if if you're not doing what he wants you to be doing or not putting in the work that you, he wants you to be doing. So, I actually think that that kind of work. I think that's all of FPX. Uh, yeah. That's literally FPX in a nutshell. Is them just grinding the fuck out. So, that's that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you. I mean, how would you think FPX would be the win most? I don't know where I'm going with this one. Do you think they would be the big? The, do you think they'd win everything? If <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fucking. I'm, I'm, uh, where am I going with this one? Okay, uh, would they be the team to beat? No, Is would they? You what, do you think they would have? Do you think they would be as fucking English language, dude? Do you think? <laughs> No, do, they would do, do I do you, <laughs> sometimes? Do you? Okay. Do I'm you gonna think lend you some mental energy. Okay, you got this. They would have been as good as they were at their peak, <laughs> without that kind of abrasive back and forth between artist and angel. Yep. If they just had a very flaccid star player uh. in the team. Do you think that they would have had that development as a team? Do you think they would have got to the point where they got to if they didn't have that back and forth, someone willing to push against certain ideas, someone willing to you know, fight against Angels? No, Angels, Angels we already saw that guy. in 2021 and they fucking flumped. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that's, I, that's my assessment is kind of, you know, they didn't really have anybody on the same level as Angel in terms of discussing what they need to be doing or grinding out whatever they need to be doing or pushing for the right ideas, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, outside, outside of Doom Bros, the coach, he's actually pretty passive. I mean, he's going to argue, but he'll also cede to his star players. 
Yes, and I think Angel wears the pants in the team, if you want to put it like that as well. Exactly, Doom, yeah. Doom Bros. <laughs> is definitely I hope like... they all wear pants. <laughs> well, so Getsu wears the pants, actually, on the team. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, okay, so let, let's assume that this uh, report, though, ends up being true, and they have seen it on the roster. What, what does that do for the squad? Because I feel like the star power there, coming from CNED, is bigger than it is from Artist, despite the... Well, not on Chamber, maybe. But if you're talking CNED's primary role of playing Jet... It, he's almost unquestionably a better jet player than Ardis is. And maybe not in terms of the flexibility, the chamber he hasn't played as much of, and Ardis has been astoundingly consistent at the international level, but also the, the KO he just hasn't played very much of at all. But if they can find a way to integrate CNED into the team and run a lot of comps around that, I, think, I mean, that kind of seems crazy, doesn't it? I mean, I, I, I think Cena is very strong. My one, like, reservation, I guess, is that one of the things I think was so strong for FPX is they were always thinking about the game very different to other people um, with, like, the Omen on Fracture and, and, like, all this stuff. And I think a lot of that came down to, like, the agent flexibility of theirs. Uh, so I think that if you are running into a world where CNED is locking in Jet every single map, that feels like a bit of a miss to me in terms of like potential for this roster, especially one that was like incorporating Rays on a bunch of maps as well. So in that sense, I sort of like the idea of Nuke, even if he did have a lot of overlap with like Zipan as a player, like the initiator, uh, like Rays flex uh, that Zipan could do. Um, so uh, if anything, I would hope that they can like work CNED into just like sort of expanding agent pool. Um, and if that was a lot of the offseason work that they could go for, uh, once they confirm signing him, I, I think that would be the best direction because I think FPX is at their best when they are very flexible and can come into maps with a comp that other teams have just never seen before. I mean, CNED has played Rays before in the past as well, right? And yeah. you could see CNED playing, you know, Jet Rays for the team and Zipan moving into being purely the like. KO player and that kind of stuff. I guess, you know, CNED would also be playing Chamber for them if they wanted to run the Chamber on maps as well, and Zipan could still pick up Rays, but uh, yeah, they, they, they have that option as well of actually running CNED as more of the um, full-time entry player. Does it yeah, excite and I think you? Like, Does this move, yeah. move the needle yeah. on excitement within Na'Vi? 100%. Hundred percent. I, I think I, either either of the the duelist locks would have been, get, gotten me excited. I'm a huge Nuke fan. Um, but yeah, I think overall, I'm I'm very much looking forward to this team. This team is going to be a, a top contender in Europe, right. I'd imagine. They're staying together. That's the fucking best news ever. Like, I mean, we already knew this shit, but pretty much they're staying together. Yeah, they're subbing one player, but we actually have one of the teams who was probably top three of of the year sticking together rather than breaking apart and like everywhere else right. so great point are but, they favorites yeah. are they favorites for sao paulo if they have four out of five of the players and everyone else is starting from <laughs> only Gosh, three stop, bro. We are they favorites? Rosters! uh out of completed rosters yes yes they're favorites <laughs> there we go you got it on record that's a plat check guarantee <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Navi. You have no chance. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. The people love it. Um, let's let's move on. We want to talk about T1 because they're signing all the jet players from Korea and building the super <laughs> jet team. <laughs> have you got a Korean jet? Whoa, we've got the bag for you. That's T1's pitch right now. I mean, they apart apart from Zeta, I guess, but they they are just acquiring. Uh, I, I suppose they've reacquired Sire player. He's going mm. back to T one. Is that the rumor? Um, I think yeah. This is a this is the report um, from Alejandro Gomez uh, here or Gomez. I think I'm mispronouncing that. Um, but yeah, the 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 report is that Sire player is set to sign with T one and kind of what would this be the fourth player on their roster or something? Um, at the moment, with a uh, ban Munchkin and Zeta. Munchkin Zeta. Yeah. yeah, that's a odd one. That's three Jet players on the team. Uh, if we see Cyplay go back to Smokes, I'm going to go to the T1 yeah, facility say, and I'm going to start petitioning outside like the Korean fans. Is there, I, I'm going to build a fucking. <laughs> you get a truck? I'm going to get a truck. I'm going to buy a truck and it's just going to say, release Spider for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could do studies on this about. Stockholm syndrome, <laughs> and going back to the, going back to yeah. him going back to T one. Yeah, after Abusive everything, relationship. he's got to be. He's got to be. Get, I mean, I hope he's getting the bag as well. But uh, I suppose it would make some degree of sense if you wanted to go back to Seoul, you wanted to live there. 
yeah. you know, T1, one of the one of the few teams that you've already got a prior relationship with, and if you wanted to go back and you know play an APAC, it's a it's a spot on the team. But the question is, how is the team going to work? Because like you said, they've got so many got so many fucking jet players, man. It's just it, presumably Munchkin is going to be playing different roles. But when I think of Munchkin, I think of Rays. Dude, I don't know what I think of when I think of Munchkin. I think of just batshit insane Japanese teams. I, yeah. I, uh, I don't even know what to think about that player. But Ban, Ban we've only seen play Jet, right? It, maybe he's played some every, Chamber as well. Chamber. Yeah, yeah, Ban's I played other remember. stuff. But I don't, it's I don't just know. a Chamber Jet every map kind of, comp, or kind of team, I think. Yeah. yeah just... what, what kind of roster could you... I mean, we had Jet... Chamber. I mean, maybe someone plays Rainer as well. <laughs> what, oh other, what other agents? I mean, Zed will be on Sova and Initiator. Dude. Like, you've got actually just like top top three Initiator. Yeah. I'm not joking. I think Zeta's so insane. Um, Zeta's like, very good. You're, you're in good hands there with Zeta. So what, they're going to run Triple Duelist with Sova and a Smoker? <laughs> yeah. Just Harbor comes into the game, just runs out. <laughs> so you play a... Picking back up the omen. Yeah, I in just, his old or omen the spot. first five duelist team. It's an idea. I think if that, if they, dude, they should just run a content team. They might still be RRQ. Just we'll talk the, about that later. Get the most, <laughs> get the most clouded team. Dude, I, I don't know. I think people, people will be listening to this and be like, oh, what's wrong with side play to T1? But it's, I think it's not the player quality we're looking at. Oh, no, it's no, the no. combination of players is the big question mark and how they would make this work. Unless, I mean, what is that? Four players? That they've got? Yeah, they've got four. I mean, yeah, what is I the mean, best really, way they of need, They just need it. a smoker. They, they need a smoker. Munchkin can go back to Fluxing uh, Initiator. Um, and then one of them, one of Ban yeah, or Gaia will be Jet Chamber and whatever. Yeah. Jet Chamber yeah, slash Duelist. Yeah. That's not that bad, really. Also, is it? I do think that, like, the future of the game, like, the best thing you can do is, like, find coachable like cracked out duelist players because those are usually like the best players d tend to gravitate towards playing duelist and then teach them how to play initiators like unironically that is just the sweetest setup you can get for a team so if they actually have the infrastructure to have the like the goal to like do that and like convert some players and, and turn into a good project i am on board t1 and that. infrastructure do not go together <laughs> they just don't <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 that is, they, they build their teams of scaffolding is what it feels like. Are Just, they owned by except, Com Comcast? <laughs> they are. Yeah, it's insane, honestly. They have so much money that they could throw together I no, mean, I'm not even. So, I'm just saying it's infrastructure. Infrastructure. <laughs> oh, you, you, I am so fucking slow. I like just, Comcast. <laughs> I am just <laughs> nice. Oh, no, God. I've actually never used Comcast. I'm just slandering their name for no good reason. I've never had a bad experience because I've never had any experience. Um, I, I did want to mention, though, that your, your point there about picking up Crack Duelist, that is actually what DRX did, the, the best Korean team in the region. Uh, I mean, Mako was a former Jet player, RB was, Buzz was. Uh, bruh, who else is on the fucking team? <laughs> that's it, bro. What are you talking that's about? All... Stax, Zest, that's it. Oh, yeah, Stax and Zest. Mako. Stax and Zest weren't Jet players. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that did kind of work for them. They've just got people within a coachable system. Maybe T1 yeah. are just trying to do the same thing. There's also yeah. kind of a there's a, a small precedent in you know I got I got to bring in my League of Legends. Uh, like there's a lot of like carry role players that would like transition to playing support. Um, just like had stronger mechanics and whatnot. And it's like okay, makes sense. Like yeah. you just take the best players at the hardest role and then move them into easy roles, and they're going to be like better than the noobs that were able to climb playing enchanters. Disgusting. <laughs> um, let, let's move on to another Korean team though. Uh, we have Jen. Uh, before we move yeah. on to T one, or uh, off of T one, who the fuck is going to be the coach? Because that's what I'm looking for right now. Are they sticking with David Denier or whatever? Because that shit don't make no sense. I need an. No, they released David Denier. I think didn't they? Did they? Okay, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not. Well, I mean, they they have Cloud 9's former coach. They have Autumn as their oh, coach. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, yeah. it's actually such a this W. This team yeah. is fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just everyone instantly. forgets that Zayn and Autumn were just a package deal, and I C9 totally let both that. of them go. Yeah. How insane are Cloud9? They're like, we have one of the best initiator players in NA, and just one of the best coaches, too. And you, yeah, yeah, you guys can go go to T1. We're gonna, like, Curry's a fine I player, but, like, that was a package deal. Yeah. That, yeah. that I mean, that is just Cloud9, though, isn't it? They just sell their best players and then look... I don't know. Well, they didn't I don't, that wasn't a sell. It was a trade. Zero dollars were exchanged. Yeah, apparently, I don't there was believe. no money involved with that. 
They said there was yeah. no, Oh, they did, didn't they? It was a it was a trade one yeah. for two. Yeah, Jack said it on Reddit, I think, at some point. Yeah, they they actually got trolled. <laughs> yeah, that's they like trading trolled. away like a dollar of Bitcoin twenty years ago for a slice of pizza. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is T1 was apparently uh, in talks to sign Lockyer as well, but that's fallen through, and now he's looking towards Gen G. So let's talk Gen G as well, because that's a team that has to build from the ground up. They were previously a North American roster. They had no, I mean, T1 still had Korean players that they could kind of, you know, build up, especially after the Zeta Autumn trade, but Gen G have got to start at ground zero. So they're looking to sign. Um, I mean, he's trying out, Lucky is trying out for Gen G, but they have also been reported to be signing Meteor and Bale. Bale, the coach, Meteor, the star player from Northeption. Um, and there are also some other pieces that you could maybe grab from Northeption too, like Jojo, who um, apparently Jojo was really instrumental in building that roster and mm. did a pretty decent job, actually, for, for you know, how unknown the talents were. Um, so, yeah, what, what do you think about this? Because I feel like Meteor is a great talent. If you're looking to build a team within... Uh, Korea, and you're picking up Korean talents. Meteor's got to be up towards the top of the list in terms of star players, no? Yeah. It's strange that T1 didn't go for him. Considering <laughs> they're trying to build their <laughs> fucking jet super team. Yeah, true, <laughs> actually. But, no, I mean, I I completely agree. I think the uh, the overall... Um, I've just been stunlocked. But... Go ahead, Josh. What were you saying? <laughs> back to you. <laughs> yeah, back to, back to you in the studio. Well, thank you, Brennan. Uh, real good report over there. Good I, work you're doing. I, I guess this could segue into. I just want to give a shout out to this guy. If you want to follow him, it's yeah. Flynn VLR. He's been posting this screenshot with updates every once in a while. Basically, you just show. Oh, there's Grogu. <laughs> <laughs> For more banger content like naked Gragas. Dude, dude, have you ever had that before? Why? Sorry. Has I, this ever happened to you? So, when you were talking about League of Legends, I'm like, I'm going to find a sexy picture of Gragas to put in, but it didn't last long enough. But I left the image open. And there it is. <laughs> uh, that's, that is a great slip up. Uh. uh this image yeah. of all the uh, roster oh. moves. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a this is a really sick thing for keeping track of what's going on. They've even color coded it in terms of like what's rumored, what's reported, what's confirmed. This is really dope. that kind of thing. Yeah, it's very cool. Thank you very much for putting this together. Helps us keep track of shit too. But um, what's their Twitter? So you, where everybody can follow them. It's actually kind of a complex name. Flynn yeah. underscore oh, yeah, VLR. <laughs> Flynn underscore VLR. Well, it was the, the capitalization, but you don't need to worry about that, honestly. Uh, but yeah, Gen G. Um, so the the big signings that are, you know, new is Meteor, Bale, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, Lakia trialing with them as well. Some other players kind of involved there. This is a somewhat interesting team, but it also just gives me... Kind of the same feeling of every other Korean team that's tried to compete with DRX over the year. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like we get hyped up about um, what the hell was the name of that team? Uh, Esports Connected or whatever the fuck they were called with uh, Zumba and King before they changed their name. Esports well, Connected. Well, uh, On Slayers. On Slayers. Yeah, but before that's that like they were called like Esports, Esports Connected. Yeah, you're yeah. right. No, Esports Connected. Yeah, Esports <laughs> Connected. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that On Slayers team or like Dam One, they're like. It looks the squad looks decent, but they're, yeah, they're never able yeah, to get never, to the same part. But you know what's different about this though is the um, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say sorry. I'm f I was dude. Hey, uh, we'll actually oh, kick you out another great report from the field. <laughs> Good this stock here. Good fucking stock. <laughs> the, uh, you can fit so many Pringles in this one. <laughs> Do you edit all these these uh, like stalls out in post? Because I've never seen them before. You know, no, usually watch this the VOD is, afterward. This is I'm, I'm on four hours sleep. I didn't take any medication. <laughs> we're so we're live alone. right now. This is just raw, this is just uncut live. footage. Yeah, we're just live. <laughs> That's the, crazy. Uh, yeah. I was gonna. Your, this, rah, rah, your your point about <laughs> will, there, will there be a contender for DRX? I went down a train of thought and skipped like the fucking middle meat of it, all of it. Mm -hmm. But I thought, yeah, but it comes down to outside coaches coming in in the form of Autumn on T1. Right. I, I, and, but I realized we're on the Gen G topic, so I fucking, again, my brain just went. <laughs> <laughs> Gragas! Yes! Yes! 
<laughs> Can you pass Bren that Red Bull, please? Yeah, I know. Who who is the coach of Gen G? Yeah, or, no. Yeah, Bale. Bale. Yeah, is Bale the only one? Oh, well, Alma Putty is, is probable, but I don't think that makes any sense. Yeah, Alma Putty was Australian. I mean, that would be unusual. Was he was he already working Most with the team and is on the way out potentially? I'm not actually sure about that. Yeah, he was with Genji before. He was the head coach of right, Genji right. prior to this. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, who knows? He was OC coach coaching NA, and maybe he's totally fine to coach Korea. But I'm just not sure. I, I don't know enough about what Bale has really done, and the accolades and the way that North Epson played was not good enough, in my opinion, to feel confident about this team, but maybe he's got what it takes to push them to the next level if he's working with a more coherent uh, roster. I don't know. I feel like APAC is going to be filled with shit teams. That's my take. That's my fucking take. I don't know whether this is going to be one of them, but I needed to get it out. It's been bubbling for a while, but holy fucking macaroni. This te this region, it, when we were making super teams, oh, fucking yeah, put it in. Put it in. It's time. Uh, when, we were, when we were talking about building super teams on one of the previous episodes, it is so hard to build super teams from the APAC uh, rosters and let's talk about RRQ shall we the RRQ fans are really fucking upset right now it's it's an Indonesian organization that's had Filipino teams so th they didn't really know which direction they were going but there is already team secret with a full Philippines roster in the franchising so the Indonesian fans were hoping that this organization would actually go for their Indonesian roots and the team tweeted out like an Indonesian flag with some, I can't remember exactly what the, the statement was, but it was like, let's get ready or something like that. I can't exactly remember what it was. And then they've re-signed their exact same Philippines roster that have been just pooed on <laughs> domestically. And then they added Tebatol to, mm. to the team. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, the Indonesian fans are fucking molding. I'm not Indonesian. I don't really care which direction the team goes in. It does seem a little shitty the way that they organized it. But what I'm pissed about is that this team does not have any hope. You've signed the Shanghai Dragons from season one again. <laughs> Fucking hell. This team is just going to get plowed. You think they're, just, they're on the same level as Shanghai Dragons in season one? No. But maybe. No, there's yeah. no shot, man. Okay, what? if they, they didn't well, qualify for their APAC LC LCQ and the tournament to qualify to the APAC LCQ, they came in like ninth. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty it, abhorrent. If, that would explain are... why I've literally never heard of this team. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is literally RRQ using their old team. And what that's what annoys me. <laughs> and that isn't the same thing that's annoying the Indonesian fans particularly. They're mad that the representation has been minimized. And also the other part to why they're mad is that you could actually spend the bag and get a sick Indonesian team going. Because there are great Indonesian players, especially if you mixed in some like other regions in there as well and built out something more like Paper X. But... There's really fucking good Indonesian players out there, and the Philippines region hasn't actually produced anything worth talking about. Yeah, it is a bit concerning, I think. The the whole it feels like APAC franchising, APAC, the APAC partnerships side of things almost feels uh, just an afterthought compared to the other two regions of you know the EMEA and the Americas. I think it's because apart from bleed. No one, uh, dude. I think Bleed robbed all the other orgs or something. They've they've just for some reason Bleed have got the fucking bag. Yeah, and the who rest of the is bankrolling Bleed? I mean, it's got to be illegal, M. hasn't it? It's got to be M. illegal. Who? Literally a fucking MI6 agent. M. Fucking the <laughs> head. <laughs> That's what it is. Is Dame Judy Dench just, just <laughs> bankrolling them all? Yeah, because they just have infinite money, it feels like. They've unlocked the infinite money hack in Sims, and they've just built a mansion, and a Sim never has to work. They just yeah. get to revel in Would you painting. like that life? Painting? and No, I wouldn't be fulfilled. No. You if need I, to work. If I had to paint every day, I wouldn't be fulfilled. Well, no, you don't have to paint. You just have to enjoy your yeah. life. You just play I mean, I, 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 I enjoy my life right you, now. You're allowed to stream, but you're not allowed to make any money from it at all. But I'm comfortable. Uh, yeah, you live in a mansion. <laughs> that's not living. That's not being comfortable. I don't care. You're a. Sim. Am I getting paid? No, you're a. No, sim. sorry. Am I, can I eat food? Do I get? Do I get fed? <laughs> like, can I survive? 
Yeah, oh, you're you're comfortable, comfortable, right? yeah, what are you but, talking about? But you're saying you live in a mansion and that's it. I just live in an empty house with no furniture, just a PC, <laughs> and I'm latched to it and I have to stream no, every day. What, what I'm you, asking You're is, describing hell. What I'm asking is, if you were a sim that had all of your monetary needs taken care of, yeah. you, are, you are the bleed <laughs> pet. And you are just allowed to live your life like a little house husband, mm -hmm. except you don't even have to look after the house. Okay. You're just fed money and food All and you just do... allowed to do what you like. But you can't There's work. You must not work. Two conditions as well. You, you have to woohoo at any time and you might <laughs> randomly get fucking dropped in the pool and walled in. That might happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, do you enjoy your life? happened to you? Um, no. No? I don't think so. I don't know. Is that a hot take? I don't think that's a hot take. Would you guys enjoy that life? I wouldn't. No. God, I'd love would it. You, you would. You would <laughs> love that. No, I wouldn't actually. I'd fucking. I would it. love to be the person controlling, like playing the sim that's stuck in the house. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> With real people? We got a psycho no. on the show. No. We got a... no, I think. Hey, I think I'd and do you want you want to start Squid Game with me? <laughs> let's let's do it. Hey chat, you want to play in Squid Game? <laughs> are you broke? <laughs> okay, we've what got we money talking for about? you. Bleed is going to fund it. <laughs> talking <laughs> about APAC. APAC. Yeah, but it but does think, feel like an afterthought because it feels like, they just don't have the money though, do they? It feels like you don't get into NA you don't get into the NA Americas yeah. league. Well, you've got a spot in APAC <laughs> because we've got a lacking of teams here. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of the big orgs. Do you choose an APAC? What's that? <laughs> I didn't hear what you two's in APAC, he said. So, I'm surprised he didn't get given a spot there, honestly, the way the, the way this will be going. But the... Yeah, it just feels like APAC is almost like the... Here's, oh, we've got this region that's going to be in the partnership leagues. You can have a spot here. You can have a spot here. Oh, these teams... It feels like they're, they're lacking to, to get them 10 team minimum. And so they're, they're left with, maybe they've had to loosen up the requirements of what went through the partnership system. And so you get instances like this with, with um, RRQ coming in and they present, they did their PowerPoint presentation and it was like something like fucking a vast PowerPoint presentation and somehow it just slipped through the cracks and, and they got in anyway. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't know. The... Yeah. They, they, you think like they this... told Riot they'd let them in on the magic? <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they were going to let them in on the prestige if they got in. But it feels like that across the board, maybe that the... the the standards are loosened for, for APAC in particular. And so you get instances like this where teams can put in or, or not necessarily put in less effort, but they can come into it with less clear game plans of how they want to build a team and actually come into it with the APAC partnership system. And they're still getting away with it. And they didn't get filtered out ahead of time. RRQ only got in because they're Wild Rift team. Is that they a have thing? a Wild Rift team? Didn't know that was a thing. That's the conspiracy theory that Bala's just Bala's literally... leaning back like, I've <laughs> dropped it. <laughs> I've got a no weight of my shoulder. Just, I just drop the conspiracy theory. Refuse to elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Pass me the doink. <laughs> Holy shit. They are are crazy. Look at that. They're really actually a really big crazy. mobile um, organization. Uh, and I mean, they, they, they said that they were like a top three org in terms of social engagement. Um, but I guess Dude, I don't know. They, they get a fucking stipend and they can't sign the best Indonesian players. Are you kidding me, man? Yeah. Uh, but the what? best player on the team is, I would say, Tebatol. Yeah, from be, yeah, from yeah, at least from what we know. Yeah. And that player was on a team that got destroyed at champs. Destroyed, but won maps both times against sure. Zeta and, and, dropped, and, and beat the K Max record. In a map that exactly. went OT. I mean, not yeah, the K-Max really means anything. Fucking crazy. Yeah. I, I think it's worth OT. noting that both of the teams that were in the finals of the APAC LCQ, Onik and Boom, they're both Indonesian teams, and they just yeah. ignored them completely. Yeah. But but that's my point is, too. If they had just signed Onik or Boom, I would have also been mad. Because that team also has no real hope of competing with the quality of rosters that are being put together globally. If you're talking about, like, you're trying to put together a team that's going to, you know, globally compete, you can't just wholesale sign a team that's already shown that it's, like, on the very bottom of the teams sure, that compete internationally. I just don't... I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make the argument that our, our Q should be competing, like, trying to build a roster when they haven't built one successfully that will compete at the global events. What they should be doing is trying to you know, be decent in the 
Pacific League so that they can then start building to be competitive globally. Yeah. I don't think you just step all the way up to fucking winning champs like randomly. No, no, I'm not talking about winning champs, but I think making it to the international scene is going to be much more difficult this time around, right? Because all of the top teams are in the same pool for APAC. You, Boom did not have to compete against the best from the East Asia qualifier as well, right? They didn't have to, I mean, fuck it, the team that came out of East Asia LCQ actually isn't even in the franchising because they're a Chinese team. So that, yeah, that argument also, doesn't make too much East sense. East Asia LCQ was the worst fucking LCQ that we saw. No, not <laughs> I mean, if you're a real fan of that. I, I don't know about that really though. You haven't lived until you've stayed up until three in the morning. Do you think Do you think Boom and Onik were better than uh, <laughs> Onslayers and... Yes. Uh, well, Onslayers was the worst geez. team you could have fucking picked. Onslayers and yes, EDG. 100%. No, EDG, no. I yeah. wouldn't say EDG, but I'd say they're probably not that far away from EDG. No. I think y'all are still fucking smoking the EDG pack, bro. Come come on, bro. Like, chill out. We we talked about this already. Dude, I'm <laughs> stoned. Oh, I'm smoking a fucking EDG pack all the way to the bank, trust me. When when they when they listen, they, I don't know what's I'm gonna be following the, the underground Chinese scene. <laughs> Partnership's gonna be going on. I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna be watching every game and Dude, that's the team I care about. Comparatively to, to the West Asia LCQ. That shit was really competitive, very, very, very competitive. And you see, you look at what the teams ended up, how they ended up playing at Champions. Um, Edward was fine. Boom was also not. Yeah, they were pretty, pretty bad, but also not the worst thing ever. No, you know. And I think if you think that, that's crazy yeah. because we've seen many of the SCA teams in the past come to international events and just completely bomb out. So yeah, they've yeah. increased leaps and bounds. And you could even use evidence from last year where. The um, who was it? Fucking, I can't remember their name anymore. But the the guy who played Ko and just pooped on everybody from that other LCQ. Who was the team oh. that qualified to champs? What are you talking about? Twenty twenty one sense. Full sense with PTC, the Ko guy that Bren was really excited about. Yeah, PTC. Yeah, PTC. That guy fucking owned in the qualifier. They pooped on. Yeah, they. they uh, well, they, it was a little bit closer between the Japanese and and APAC teams, but the Korean teams were nowhere to be found. Okay, yeah, to yeah, be yeah. fair though, that LCQ, as I cast that LCQ, I know, I know. that was the worst quality of games I have ever seen. I am oh, not that's joking. That's no, I am not bad. joking. I Go back and watch those games. Early. Attack side defaults are not a default. They literally just have two players and three players sitting out of mains on both sides waiting for push in like yeah. three out of four rounds. And skies always lurk on attack. I'm, I'm not <laughs> joking. The top four teams, every sky was lurking on attack and faking entrances onto site. F putting full utility into one site trying to fake yeah. and the defensive team never even flinched. It was just sky uses all utility A, rest of the team won walks into B. That was the macro. It was terrible. Yeah, you can mold all you want, but in terms of context, I think what mattered was that APAC and Japan were really, really emerging regions, like really fucking low down the totem pole, and they competed against the top Korean teams. And then that trend continued this year, right? That's the that's more of the point sure, than anything sure. else. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, some kind of blend of those two teams with the with the best players on each would have been would have been at least, yeah, more interesting than this. I feel yes. like RRQ is, at the moment, leading the way for the Wooden Spoon Award, of which will be the worst team in franchising entirely. Which And it's not even close. Dude, I'd love mind. to see a triple elimination tournament. Triple elimination tournament with the worst teams. And you, and you only progress by losing. <laughs> Every time you win, you are sent home, and you, like, you know, you, you, you complete your run. It's not mean. It would be fucking great content. It'd be great content. And if you it lose, would... you have to battle for oh, the gauntlet. More. Yeah, it's the gauntlet oh, down. But, but, it, but in order to like get people like still try to win, you have to like the prize pool is yeah. like higher for winning the early game rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So if, if you win your first game, you get the highest possible prize pool. Yes. And if you lose, it keeps going down until the finals, which is the loser of the finals gets zero dollars. <laughs> 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 That would be an amazing... Why haven't they done that as a gimmick? I mean, Bro. it's an incredible gimmick. I was talking about this last year as well. But the, I think a tournament like that as well gives more airtime to the teams that suck. And that is what they would want That's as well. Awesome. You know? Dude, yes! Plat chat fucking Let's organize tournament. It. 
We have a couch. All the best players who are winning their games fucking come on the cast. And they just <laughs> show up on the worst team. Holy shit. W- let's kick, I mean, let's kick started. We'll pitch it to the sponsors. Yeah. We, need, we need a very large prize pool, though, to get the teams interested in the first place. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, they're not going to want to join the, the shitty tournament. Yeah. Yeah, the Platt yeah, yeah. Shat Wooden Spoon tournament is not going to have too we many We can play teams. in our garage with no air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deep cut, Brad. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, okay. Let's take a break. On the other side of the break, we are going to talk about the fucking insanity that's been happening in Game Changers. We're going to be talking about some big free agents that are out there as well. The crew news, what Mixwell's up to, all of that kind of stuff. So stick with us. We're just going to have a quick break. and We'll be back in a sec. I don't know why you always act as if like we're gonna be quiet now. We're still gonna I'm talk gonna to you quiet. guys. I'm gonna sleep. We're still gonna for talk. Minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna go and get the. Um, I'm gonna go and get the. I have a package outside. Laptop because I haven't been able to see people. Oh yeah, Talking. I'm gonna play some cool. Um, what is it called? Copyright free music. Let me Google something Whoa. awesome. Like actually Google something awesome or. Google something else, and then you're hoping it will be awesome. All right, I googled copyright free awesome music. All right, Whoa. this video has chill dark synthwave mix. Yes, please. That's, sign me up. Oh my god, this look at this look at this video. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh my god. Oh my All god. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, well, that's what we're listening to for now. Awesome. Uh, And for those that don't know, sounds like cyberpunk. Oh yeah, cyberpunk after hours. All right, so So the the next topics we have. Shit, this is getting loud. Oh, it is cyberpunk. Okay. Okay. Uh, The next topics we have lined up are drama Wednesday, game changers edition. Uh, we have a crew topic, we got Mixwell, we got TSM, we got to talk about TSM, and a bunch of notable free agents announcements, and any breaking news that happens within now and the end of the show, we'll talk about. And I really need to use the restroom at some point. I'm going to do that right now. Oh. Guess it's just me. Who's got the best name on this list? The list that we're looking uh, at right now? Who's got the best name? Let's there see. You go. I like the name Wyatt. No, come on. It's it's pretty unique. Just Wyatt. Just Oscar Wyatt. Oscar Springborg. If you, <laughs> Springborg is an incredible name. You have to legally change your name to somebody's on this list. Who do you go for? Theroux. My last name is not Theroux. Artin no. Theroux. I would go Rome. Rome's the name. It's simple. Mm. Yeah. It's like not the worst stage name either, you know. It's it's I. <laughs> Give me Virim. Virim, yeah. That I mean, Virim sounds like the name of some some character in a fantasy book. Yeah, it really does. I would go for um. I'd go for Tom. I'd just be known Whoa. as Tom. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> and then I'd pose as Tom Biz, and I'd take double the pay from all of these <laughs> tournaments that we cast. I have an uh, idea. You'd have to get a bald cap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Shroud's stream yeah. the other we, day. Well, let's be clear, we all were. Yeah. And uh, he was like, <laughs> he, was, he, he, was, he was doing that thing, and I could tell he was doing it because sometimes we do it, where he was, he was like planning something in Discord DMs while he was streaming <laughs> and was like kind of like, being like, but wouldn't that be good to the guy he's like in a duo with? And he was doing with Zelsis. Mm. And, but he wasn't giving any context. Mm. But the context clues were that he wants to build a team to play in Ascendancy. Oh, he's he's talked about this a little bit or hinted at it a little bit what, in interviews and stuff. What would happen if he just dropped his money, his streaming bag money, and just bought out the best players in North America? <laughs> 
I mean, I mean that still TSM only cost mad. him like a tenth of the mixer buyout, so yeah, like, he's set. <laughs> yeah, Wait, are I we mean, talking about Ninja or Shroud? Shroud. Oh, just... Shroud. Oh, okay. I, I feel Ninja like did this before. It didn't go that great. Yeah, n yeah. Ninja had a team, mm. but he didn't have the best free agents in tier two on the team. Yeah. What if Shroud dropped the bag and just bought out Ye's contract from Cloud Nine? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's likely. I don't what think. What if he just bought Cloud Nine? Yeah, yeah, he could do it. Uh, are we just living in the world where Shroud has more money than God? I feel like even <laughs> even Aren't he we? even he is going to have some limits on the amount he can spend. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. But does God have money? Right. I don't. I don't know. It's just a he can print I mean, more whenever he wants. I think. Uh, yes. Yeah. I assume that. Right, how about this for Like Shroud, the treasury. Baby Bay, Dicey, Valen. Almost. That doesn't have players. No, it needs one more. I'm just trying to think. Give me one da more player. Dapper. 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 Boom. What do yeah. you think? What do I think? Uh, I think a lot of those players are uh, not too happy about playing in Ascension. But what if he's paying them a million? A uh, milli. A mil each? Yeah, a milli each. Well, so it's a $4 again. million dollar roster. Yep. To win Ascension. Yep. And they stream at every scrim. <laughs> Thoughts? I think they don't win and he loses a lot of money. I mean, they made their money back. Um, okay. We, we, I don't know where that tangent was going. I don't know. That's, I just, that's not related to anything that we were planning to discuss. No, it popped up in my head. So it, that was just Bren's little journey in Shroud fandom. <laughs> um, let's, let's, do the, let's do Drama Wednesday. Whoa, crazy. Let's talk about Game Changers and the fucking bonkers and heinous shit that's been going on yeah. over there as well. Um, I think we begin with the cheating drama because that's the one that's been the most publicized. But there's actually two big things that have been going on um, this week within Game Changers. Um, but this is separate to the cheating drama of Guild, which we talked about last week where they were using the Viper Molly stuff. This is someone literally using cheats in the game. There was a game that happened and after the fact, um, one of the players got caught by the... I don't even know what Riot call it. What are they? The, the like Vanguard? I think the anti-cheat police. No, I mean police. their team. Yeah, the anti-cheat police. They uh, have a word for it, but I can't remember. The integrity squad or something like that. I can't remember what they call it. But essentially, someone was found with third-party software that was presumably cheats uh, mm. during a game in Game Changers. And then it comes out afterwards that they were faking being non-binary as a joke. I mean, should we run through this point by point? Because it's just absurd. So there's a competitive ruling. After Saturday's Game Changers open qualifier between uh, EQ Curries and CLG Red, or Ceres, I don't know how to pronounce that, EQ and CLG, the anti-cheat team identified a prohibited third-party tool usage, cheats basically, on a player on EQ. And they all fucking denied it, deny, deny, deny. And then they said, well, actually, you, you got me. I was using my main Discord account to buy cheats. Yeah. But I didn't use them in the match. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yes, I do admit I did own cheating software and was brand prior, but I didn't use it in any of the games or on the match played in the tournament client. Okay. I mean, either way, get the fuck out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think as well, though, the, it's, it's incredibly frustrating how, I mean, is there any punishment towards this other than the team obviously being DQ'd? Is there any punishment directed towards this player who was subbing in for them? I, who was pretending to be non-binary? Who's literally oh, so just... They were, they were subbing in in the first place because one of their players was like removed for racist, racist yeah. comments. So then this is the player that they got to sub in yeah. for somebody who was being racist. They got a cheater faking being non-binary I mean, just an to absolute... sub in mockery to the entire game changer system of of people i mean this individual as well just pretending to be non-binary as well is it is it's, a, it's like throwing just shit in the face of the entire system of game changers the, the reason it exists yeah. as a system which is to provide a safe place for you know people of whatever identity to um compete in that's you know outside of it they can you know develop and compete in and it's just i don't know it's I feel like there should be some level of punishment that's directed at this individual who's come into it. I'm, but... I'm sure there will be. I mean, yeah. you, can't, you can't fraudulently get your way into a system like this and expect not to receive any consequences. I mean, I'd be incredibly surprised if they were allowed to compete in this or in the regular system, at least for a significant period of time in the regular system. 
I, I would say usually Riot is pretty good with coming out with punishments. I would imagine that it's going to be slightly delayed because there's a lot of context here of like teammates knowing and being in on the quote unquote joke, um, which is just insane that it's called that. Just absolutely insane. Um, so I would expect a ruling to come out at some point in the next few weeks. And I would imagine it is very harsh um, because like, especially like the whole like faking it thing is like the that's the shit that gets thrown around whenever like any of these types of leagues get like brought up as like a reason not to do it. And it's like, Oh, but people just fake, you know, and then whatever it's like, and that's so shitty, but it's like, whenever anything like this happens, it just gives like, it gives fuel to that argument, yeah. which is a shitty argument and is not a real argument. Um, but like just one thing like this, like you might look at it and be like, Oh, they get banned. It's not that big of a deal, but it actually really fucking sucks for the entire scene. The other part too, is the teammates, even outside of, you know, the teammate that was in on the person the faking being a non-binary, they, they said that they weren't using the cheats during the game. You don't know that as a teammate. You just don't know. There have been situations where people are cheating and their teammates have no idea. I mean, the whole point of using cheats in the game is that you need to make it subtle in order to avoid being caught. Part of that means that you, you can't be confident that your teammates are cheating, even if they're bottom fragging or whatever. They, they could just be cheating and being really shit. I, I think I would still bottom frag a lot of games if I was cheating. <laughs> you, you just don't yeah. know. Yeah, it, it's just, absurd really don't. to yeah. defend a person in this kind of situation. It just doesn't it make sense. It devalues the entire um, structure and league that you're even playing in as well in the first place. I mm. just as well to defend people like that. Yeah, get the fuck out. But also, the... Um, yeah, so this was... An absurd situation, just, just awful. And then, I uh, actually probably even worse. Heading over to um a, a an organization called, I mean the most ironically named organization ever, Rising Hope, which, I mean is just a horrendous org. They their um own, their co owner was sitting in on scrims. Um, completely disrupting what was going on with their um, with their team, which was a game changers team, and they were like harassing the team as they were scrimming, and then also just decided to flash their cock. Used to the, the, they were making weird remarks to the other coach or the other people involved, the staff, and saying like, "Hey, show me your dick, ha ha." Just like, uncomfortable was, comments all the time. Yeah, just really uncomfortable, weird, weird comments. And then just decided to hop on a Discord call and flash a cock during a scrim. Bruh. I Who mean, are these people? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, I, I think the social the, the media double team, down. They, you see... they got rid of the team and then they were like, oh, well, the open trials, but we're not well, signing where... females anymore yeah. because females are a problem. I'll get the fuck out of here. Was it in the same thread here, this Twitter thread? I think it was. Oh, no, maybe it was a different one. Oh, maybe they deleted it. I don't fucking know. Anyway, it I think oh, it was this it was one. This it was one this one. Here. Working just... with a professional coach who may or may not flash his penis at you. I mean, just just horrific. Just absolutely horrific. Look, look at the tweet after this as well, Kurt. P.S. This time we are only recruiting men. Wow. I mean, what? it's just... What? I mean, rightfully, the community just absolutely clowning the fuck out of them as well in the responses. Yeah. But just, again, ab abhorrent game, uh, just, uh, abhorrent just situation all around um, with, with, with this. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's, there's not really much more to add other than that. One of the things I wanted to mention is that uh, I think stuff like this, it distracts from game changers and... These are things that are happening from men. That this game changers is literally for everyone that isn't a guy, and it's just dudes ruining it and making it yeah. like shining a mm -hmm. bad light on game changers, and it's super annoying to me. How ludicrous is that, though? Because I think it's a great point that Kurt brings up. The first situation is a, a man pretending to be non-binary and cheating in a game, and then the second situation, man flashing cock at women's team. And then dropping them all and saying, we only want to work with men, actually, because they'll be fine with us flushing our cocks. I mean, it's just, just, hello, PSA to men out there. You, this is not a space for you. Stop fucking it up. Stop fucking it up. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy.
it's it's and it's, it's incredibly disappointing as well when it we're literally coming to the culmination of game changes as well as a league. Yeah. It's like the end of it of when you're literally supposed to be watching the best of the best compete and then this is the primary headline of what everybody's focusing on. Which there's a reason for it. I mean, I think Sapphire put out a, a really good tweet talking about how yeah. you know there's a lack of media training. It's it's putting a big emphasis and highlight on amateur teams in tier two. And it's um and you know, a lot of these a lot of the players aren't media trains. This is related to the you know, prior stuff with the, the teammates defending the cheetah. But, you know, outside of that as well, it's like everyone's focusing on a drama. There's no main VCT to pay attention to, which otherwise would be taking up a lot of the news cycle, sure. I think, as well. And, and so there's drama kind of in stuff. a lot of tier two, you know, all the time that doesn't get stuff. spoken about. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it does but present an opportunity to just talk about game changes a bit, though, because there's some sick tournaments coming up, too. Yeah, in fact, the, the NA main event is starting right now, in about an hour, I think, oh, really? if you're watching this live, yeah. Sick. Um, so, yep. 3 p.m. Central, right? That's yeah. It's kicking off. And I think there's, uh, there is, like, one really good game in the quarters that caught my eye between uh, Misfits and Shopify Rebellion. Yes. Are playing yeah. against each other. I don't know if that game is today, though. Yeah, all of the opening games oh, are today, including today. the lower round and upper semis. Right, They're doing right. the old observed streamed games, yeah. those types of things. I don't know. I don't know enough about the game changer scene to like point out which matches look good, other than like very cursory comments. But I'm planning to like start watching, especially once this gets deeper into the playoffs, and definitely for the like big finals event that's happening in Berlin as well. Berlin, yeah, yeah, especially because I, even if you only care about the main circuit. The, the top players from here are potentially really attractive prospects just because they don't get limited by the, by the import rule as well. So the, mm -hmm. there are reasons to care even if all you care about is the absolute elite tier of competition. But also, th these tournaments should just be very entertaining. Yeah. I saw Zekin tweeting about it as well. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm so uh, I, I got to cast some games just last week. There's going to be more uh, tomorrow of the enemy cast. But uh, honestly, like uh, a lot of these matchups are good. I think Misfit Shopify you pointed out is going to be a solid one. I think TSM and Exet, that should be a pretty good matchup uh, as well. Um, I imagine complexity just steamrolls EG and, and that's a, a quick 2-0. But generally speaking, uh, and this is Mimi, of course, with the path to Game Changers Championship, which for most teams is just win. Um, but generally speaking, I think the, the two big surprises or maybe not even surprises, but like the standout teams from like previous uh, events are Complexity and Misfits. Keens is an absolute fiend uh, on the chamber for Complexity. I believe had like something, I, I don't know the KDA or the KD off the top of my head, but it's like over 2.0, which is just ridiculous. Um, and then uh, Floor also, oh, this is her Game Changers debut. Um, Floor has played in some tournaments with Misfits in the past, but had been uh, like age restricted from competing in Game Changers in the past. And she just comes in and dominates on the jet. And I think her Neon is like on par with some of the best in NA. And it's hilarious. I literally asked her after the game. She's like, yeah, I think my Neon's bad. That's why I picked Jet today. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like your Neon is actually like your movement is like up there with like Baby Bay. I'm not even joking. Floor is just an unreal prospect. And we are, I, I genuinely believe that we are one great day going to see her compete on, in the main stage of ECT. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the, that's the end goal of this entire thing with the game changes, right? Is to promote the kind of uh, integration at the top end of the scene too. Um, yeah, Zekin here, kind of expecting Cloud9 to clean house, but yeah, there should be some great games up there too. And we don't actually know yet who's going to be representing. It seems like it's going to be Cloud9 White, but the, there are two spots, I believe, from North America. Two. Yeah, yeah, two. Yeah, so there's another team that has the potential to, uh, to fight for one of those Additional Whoever spot. wins, and then it's it's basically the exact same as like a yeah. VCT last chance qualifier thing where the points uh, matter yeah, yeah. to qualify. Yeah. And just for like the the quick lore drop, if if you guys like aren't super familiar with the game changer scene, is basically um, C9 White has always won in any game changers. They're just literally always winning. Shopify Rebellion is always right underneath them, and they actually won a best of three series for them in the last stage of game changers and sent C9 White to the lower bracket. They ended up losing in the finals, um, but like that was a huge win for them to get. Um, so they are sort of the expected second team, and yet they lost to Complexity uh, earlier in this tournament just uh, last weekend. So Complexity are looking really, really hot. Misfits as well. I think Misfits, Complexity, and Shopify are all sort of right now competing competing for the second spot behind cloud nine white um who's effectively a shoe in like it's like you saw from the me tweet like it's almost impossible for them not to go unless they lose both of their games and yeah get they just have to win one match right they just have to yeah. win one game, yeah. yeah 
So. Yep. And, and obviously, I, I, I do think that it's a little less cut and dry in terms of them actually winning this tournament. I think they are still far and ahead better than them, but they've been getting pushed recently, right, in terms of yep. losing a series. Last, last event, they kind of went on the warpath because they got DQ'd in one of their early games, <laughs> and then they fucking ended up coming back and winning through the lower bracket. Uh, but yeah, it's they've been pushed by Shopify before. They're starting to drop maps, those sort of things. Uh, we have some bold predictions for who is going Ooh. to get into the finals and win as well. So bold preds for Game Changers NA. Bold predictions. <laughs> That's the jingle. All right. So all all four of us with Cloud seem Nine very White. Bold. No, it doesn't this seem doesn't bold. Seem actually, very at all. Bold at all. Curious. Yeah. It's as bold as I'll get. <laughs> but the only bold it's interesting because it looks it. like two of us are watching the recent game change yeah. and two <laughs> of us watched last stage. I, mm. I, as, as I've said, mm. haven't watched very much mm. at all. I'm planning to <laughs> heading in. I'm just going off the, the, the only narrative I know, which is Cloud9 mm. versus Shopify. That's the only... Uh, this is the, the complete ignorant punters narrative is where I've gone yeah. for. But I'm planning and and to be real, like today. C9 Shopify are like the equivalent of what like G2 and Guild were over in, in EMEA as far as like the number one and two team for all of recent memory. I'm a little surprised that no one put complexity. Honestly, I was like really torn between Misfits and complexity. Uh, the unfortunate thing is we just haven't seen enough games, I think, from like the new teams of Misfits and complexity playing against like other good teams like complexity beat Shopify. And that was like their only real test. And that was a quick 2-0 um so i think it's still really hard to say who's second seeders or like how good those teams legitimately are um but i think it could either be misfits or complexity taking the number two spot intriguing yeah um people were asking us to do a co-stream of that as well but i think we're going to be busy by the time or rather co-stream of the the champions thing when it comes around but mm -hmm. i think we're going to be busy at the time um so we're, we'll see maybe There'll probably be some people doing some big co-streams of that kind of stuff because it's, I mean, it's the premier tournament, actually, that's happening in the off-season. Which is the um, start of November, I think, in, middle of November. Uh, middle of, yeah. For, for, the, for the Berlin. Yeah, I think yeah. it's like 12th or something, 15th, something like that, anyway. A month away. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Pretty close. Okay. Um, let's, let's go back to talking about some free agency stuff, though, um, after our respite talking game changes. I want to talk crew. Let's check in with LATAM for a while. Because crew have made some serious moves away from their previous core roster, which was one of the most long-standing rosters that we had in VCT and was hyper-consistent, making it to the international level time and time and time again. The only team that went to every single global event. But now they don't have Kesnit, they don't have Mazino. I would argue they're two best players. I believe they don't have Delzik either. And instead, they've got uh, Shandy and they've got... Um, Oh, who did they most recently have as a pickup? It was another Opa that was like a, a lesser known player that was coming up. I've forgotten now. But, I remember. But they have, they have like three Opping players on the team <laughs> right now. Um, there was a... Davey? Uh, what was a Doc? Say? Yes. Yeah, this is the one. Davey. Sorry. It's Davey from, um, from the Lasers team. Um, who's also an Opa alongside Shandy, alongside Nag. So... It doesn't really look like a coherent roster right now. It looks a bit messy, kind of like T1. How do you see the trajectory headed for crew? I think they're scrambling right now just to find players to fill their roster, uh, just in general, because obviously we've got three days to the lock and everybody else is getting uh, you know, picked up at this point. So... The fact that we see a couple people, I don't know why I didn't say this for T1, but the fact that we see a couple people that probably overlap or whatnot doesn't necessarily mean that that's how it's going to stick because I don't, I don't see a world in this place where I can make it work with Nags, with Shand. Well, Shand is a little um, flexible. Yeah, but other than that, KO and stuff. Yeah, I don't know much about Davies. Um, and Phineas is the other guy I think is rumored uh, to potentially be going over there. There's... There's... There's a lot going to be missing with the two. I mean, they're the star players, Kesson and Mazzino. You have to reach so deep to find anybody. I think this was a problem for them already. Was even replacing Nags back in the uh, back before you know even Copenhagen or whatnot. That was a conversation, and it's just really hard to do in lot of time. I think uh, yeah. you have to be building up talent, and I don't actually think that this is 
what they're trying to do. And I don't yeah. think they have the staff to do it either. Is, are they making these changes, presumably not on the org side? Is this the players who are, who are looking for other options? Oh, Kessler and Mazzino, yeah. Kessler yes. Mazzino. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't really know. I mean, Mazzino's, Mazzino's rumored been... to go to Leviathan. What, sorry? Mazzino's rumored to go to Leviathan. Yes, for Mazzino, but I haven't heard anything about Kesnet or Delzic, unless I've just missed it. Uh, I didn't hear about Delzic. Kesnet's rumored to go to somewhere in Spain. Oh, mm. I see. One of the Spanish teams. Huh. Yeah. That, That's that the rumor. Be... That's the thing that I think he probably is trying for. I forgot about that as a bit... possibility. That sounds crazy, actually. Yeah. It could be quite interesting. I don't. I just. I, I struggle to think because uh, I'm partially very ignorant of the kind of Latin talent pool of who they could pick up that could replace them. You know what I mean? Because the it seems like Latin is so top heavy with Crew and Leviathan that uh, where where are you pulling this talent from? Presumably there are very talented players that are still in still available to be picked up, but you you are literally starting from ground zero. And what to Bala's point, where you're just talking, do we do we expect them to? The, have the knowledge and know-how of how to build a roster up from the from scratch again in such short notice when literally the signing period is about to end the early preliminary signing period of where you have to have players ready with the visa process started is on october 15th which is in what two days yeah, yeah that's it, it is very short notice but we kind of talked about this approach and uh, in different times too where you just have to get six players in and then you can still chop and change from there. Yeah, you know, you can. There won't be as many players available, but as long as you just get six nailed in with a, a head coach and whatever head coach GM, you can you can still make all the moves you like heading forwards. I mean, the the crew players or the T1 players or whatever, they might not even stay for more than a couple of weeks. You know, they might just get locked in so that they have six, and then they add in their real pieces and drop players afterwards. That's the reality of the system at the moment. So. Most teams are not going to do that, but some of these wonkier rosters might end up having to just because of the time crunch. Yep. Especially one where the, the talent pool is much more limited. Like I was trying to look up like open qualifier stats in terms of like how many teams are playing in the you know lot, lot of times South open qualifier and stuff like that, but it's just it's just not much. And you're split geographically as well in terms of uh, pool. Although I guess with the league you're not, but in terms of who they're experienced with, who they share cultures with and stuff like that. It's it's a lot. Well, that's one of the reasons that it's interesting they picked up Davey, though, because that's a Latam North player. Or, that is a lot. He's going to. So, you know, they have the ability to pull from those pools. What I hadn't considered at all is the idea of the Latam players going and playing for the Spanish organizations. For some reason, that had never even crossed my mind as a possibility. But holy shit, if you're looking to sign top Spanish-speaking players, of course you would go for the Latam players because they're the most successful, actually. You know, I was thinking about Mixwell and then, like, I'm like, I guess you you kind of going kind of deep down into some of the tier two before in EMEA anyway before you get to um, good prospects that work there. But yeah, going for going for Latin players seems like a great idea for you know your Koi and your her Heretics and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. Is there a possibility of crew going the other direction of picking up players from North America? I know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, you have even some of the players who've swapped to play a lot of time north, like um, who the fuck is the guy? Decop, Decop? Torify, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. those those types of guys, uh, 100%. But also, I'd, just Spanish is probably one of the easiest languages in terms of you know people who have experience with it in, in the States and stuff like that. So it's definitely a possibility. Yeah, that would be compared, very interesting. Compared to Portuguese or Korean or anything like that. I, I can't think of an instance off the top of my head of a an... A primary English-speaking player joining a, um, well, well, I suppose actually Decom and Torify are that exact example of uh, people that are going uh, yeah, and playing within the Latam scene and um, mm -hmm. on a Spanish-speaking roster. Well, with... there was a lot of them in CS, a lot of them. Um, I think of like a guy called Sickly. There's examples of them ending up playing in really, I mean, Sickly is actually playing in in. Some of these lockdown north teams right, as well. right so there's a lot of those examples actually where you start up and playing and you know you live in florida or whatever and you're playing with some of these lockdown north teams right right yeah that's super interesting it, it is it is a cool prospect um so 
would you put crew in the same kind of bucket though as your t1s and stuff the the kind of teams that we don't really expect to be doing much is this the fall of crew as one of those teams that is always going to make it globally yeah i think you have to be in the top half of the americas in order to make it to the global events something like that anyway probably makes sense do you see this team as being top half americas top six something like that nope Nope. Is there any hope? I mean, even even in comparison to T1, I feel like I'm more excited about the prospects and talent on that team than I am of the guys right now who are on the crew. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's too... Who's who's remaining on this roster as of as of right now? Klaus and Nags are yeah, the only uh, remaining crew players, but obviously Davies and... Davies, know, Shandy have been Shandy, indicated yeah. to be joining the team as well. It's a bit of a messy roster. It doesn't look amazing to me on paper i mean the the um the guy's twitter uh picture would probably be the best thing to pull up here Kurt, if you wouldn't mind just so that we could get a look at crew and um leviathan as well because both of those teams are making changes and you know the, the roster the roster the rosters on the twitter. sorry the rosters graphic is what i what, what i'm want, from Flynn. Is, i thought Flynn you wanted their headshots guy. just their twitter profile <laughs> me too pictures. that's I what i want. understood no sorry I, I um i didn't communicate very effectively there um but yeah, the, the, the LATAM teams have been the, some of the biggest surprises, I would say, out of anything in Valorant that we've seen. Leviathan and crew really yeah. coming alive has been one of the biggest surprises for me, especially considering how small the scenes are. Um, and it's strange to me that those teams as well are part of the same thing that's happening with the Brazilian squads, where they're all kind of splintering and reforming their own, uh, their own systems. Uh, yeah, we'll have to find them in here. Yeah, bottom, left. bottom left. There we go. Bottom left for both of them, actually, as well. Yeah. So the the Leviathan team, though, is is pretty interesting because they're just, you know, Melzer, Adverso, and then bringing in Mazzino and Nosware is apparently the other one. Um, that's, well, this is Mauser's rumored on crew. Um, yes. I what? forgot about that, actually. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I believe that was... Has that even... Has that been officially announced? I can't remember. Is I've that lost reported? track of that. I think that was reported that he's I going trust from my life to, to the crew. spreadsheet, and it says there's a big green where <laughs> basically to, next to Melzer's name. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, there's a smokes player. So your roster is looking kind of like, um, you know, Klaus is playing primary initiator. Shandy's playing the flex. You've got Nags playing. I mean, Nags and Davies are probably going to be, you know, either some playing some formulation of entry and chamber kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and then Melzer on smokes. It's not, a, it's not a terrible roster. It's no, worst. it's not terrible. Oh, yeah, it's not the worst. It's just not exactly as... I don't know. It has strengths in different positions, right? It's, yeah. It doesn't excite me too much, though. I feel like it's not good enough to match up. And honestly, if we're being real, that crew roster, even previously, is not making it top half of the Americas, right? Like they made it no, to every global event because they were good in APAC. Who the fuck? NRG. Sorry, I was in, uh, say loud. Yeah. NRG loud. Maybe Sentinels. Loud fuck. nine. Hundred thieves. C nine uh, hundred thieves. Uh, yeah. There's, there's. Some, I mean, you can maybe make an argument for it. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, Possibly. who knows? Again, we're fucking speculating about yeah. incomplete yeah. roster. <laughs> Look, I plead the fifth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, South American Valorant is my blind spot. It's on at the same time as NA. I haven't had to prep for Nash. I plead the fifth. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. What about the? Le Let's quickly look at the Leviathan team as well on the same spreadsheet. I is this a better version of Leviathan with Mazino I plead the fifth. with Noswa? <laughs> I mean, they haven't really. They haven't changed too much. No, they haven't changed I mean, too much, but they've changed two, you know, fairly large pieces, yeah, think... and they have they have no fucking smokes player on the team, by the way. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's yeah, what, <laughs> what is the plan there? <laughs> I, I think Mazzino's played smokes. In has has Mazzino played smokes? Actually, no, that's Cap. Dude, what, you have, they had you another have... smokes player before. That's crazy. <laughs> that's awesome. How are you this able to transform into the Baron Harkonnen from Dune? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got suspenders just floating around. Dude, that is crazy. Yeah, I've got a manipulable body. What? Uh... You should see me without the constraints of my clothing. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, oh shit. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, that's, that's not a comparison you want to be known for. Oh, uh, he, he, he was a powerful political figure. Baron Harkness. Yeah. <laughs> don't read the books. Just don't read the books. The, I'm in uh, the fifth book right now. It's you're in the crazy. fifth book? Yeah, I read for June yeah. recently. They all just of them. get they go, they go, shit. They get so fucking weird. <laughs> After the fourth, they just go insane. Uh, yeah, anyway. I'm on like the 100th Duncan Idaho now. Yeah. And it's so creepy. <laughs> He's 12. What are the sisters doing with the what is going on here? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, he's what? not 12, what? actually. You know, he's got the <laughs> brain of a fucking 5,000 year old being or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the Dune books are yeah. crazy. You should all read them. I've only read book one and I'm fucking lost in the sauce. They're good books. <laughs> yeah. Um, what the fuck were What are you guys about? reading in chat? Or if you're listening to it uh, after we're done being live? <laughs> yeah, post a comment if you've read the Dune series or what your favorite book is. Yeah. And uh, we'll have that discussion. I like the, the cat in the hat. Yep. Um, yeah, like what the, what the hell are Leviathan doing about without Leviathan? a smokes player? I don't know. Uh, is Mazzino playing smokes? This this team makes no sense to me. I, I, do, I just don't Maybe get it. Maybe they're just uh, thinking that they can move somebody into the role. Uh, controller often gets relegated to that kind of position where teams will sometimes just pick up players and they're like, well... If they're if you're okay playing smokes, it's like in ranked when you fucking when you you go to the bathroom and you're the last pick. And you have to play you have to play smokes now. It yeah. Just happens with rosters, just on a much more macro scale. Maybe King's gonna play full time Viper and they just have Viper on every map. Yeah, We're just gonna play idea. solo Viper every map. That sounds like a good idea. Whoa. Yeah, Latam is a bit lost in the source right now. Let, let's go from Latam to Spain and talk about Mixwell. Mixwell was previously. At least hinting, we thought, towards Koi. Instead, Mixwell is now reported to be going towards Heretics. And Koi have different plans. Um, we'll talk about the Koi plans in a sec. Mixwell to Heretics. Do we know anything fucking else about Heretics? Uh, my brain is melting. What else do we know about Heretics? Like a gulf in information for EMEA with the partnerships. Does it? It feels like it. I mean, we have a lot of info about, like, Na'Vi, Fnatic, Liquid, uh, Common Core. Like, we know quite a bit about those kind of teams. I just don't know about Heretics. They're bringing uh, Nisao they... back, I heard. <laughs> that got a chuckle out of Kurt. That's... <laughs> no, it's not true. It's not true. I just lied on the internet. <laughs> just lying. Um, yeah, what does the spreadsheet say about Heretics? Yes, let's I've... consult the spreadsheet. Consult the spreadsheet. Bring it up, please. I feel like at this point we have to pay this Flynn guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, is, this, this fucking episode is just read the spreadsheet. Read the spreadsheet. It's oh, at the bottom. What does it mean? Nah, this oh, is. Then they, they, they're like they're in the they're in the orange. We yeah. shouldn't even be talking about them. No, we shouldn't. They're in the orange. Yeah. I mean, Mixwell and Kellogg's is a that's that's a reasonable team. You I can mean, build from the beginning on. <laughs> Mixwell and Kellogg's again. <laughs> I've seen this all over again, man. I've seen this all over again. Zeke, perhaps. Mm, Don't curious. fucking do this to me. I mean, Heretics just looks like. Hey, we're gonna be G two when they were molding everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's be G two when our team was better than G two. That's a great <laughs> plan, guys. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, yeah, let's talk about Koi. Koi are actually interesting. <laughs> Koi, Koi, Koi have plans to. Okay, Koi have built out from one of the best free agent IGLs in EMEA, which is called Amenta. He's been consistent. He's got his teams to big international events multiple times with multiple different rosters. And they've got uh, the core of Cold Amenta building on top with Shados, Starzo, which is fucking interesting this as is well. This is interesting. Yeah. I actually didn't see the Wolfen signing. I don't even know who Wolfen this is. This is literally I'm lost like an there. hour ago. What, sorry? Wolfen played on... Uh, this is like an hour ago, by the way. This oh, is shit. This is breaking yeah, yeah. news. Uh-huh. Uh, Wolfen played for Case Esports or something like that? Yeah, like, Case. In the VRLs. Um, pretty good. I think he actually has experience playing with Twist in, if I'm not mistaken, too. So, okay. this makes and, sense. Yeah, and then they've got Barba linked to the team as head coach. I'm quite excited about that team, then, to be honest. Yeah? I think Barba, good coach, energetic guy, clearly works out. You know, he's getting, he's getting a pump when he's in the fucking on-the-camera shot of the coaches. He's getting a pump on 24-7. All right, Baron, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody... What that was, was the name Bruce of the, Willis, I think. What was the name of the house? How, Atreides, fucking Atreides. Atreides, yeah. yeah. Atreides, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Star, but Starzo was well on the team, and who else was, was rumored? Uh, Shados. Shados. Shados as well. I think this team is looking pretty... Exciting, actually. Yeah. 
Uh, it's shaping up to be some of the, the yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm down for that feelings build. about this team. They've got an IGL mm-hmm. coach, like, pair that yeah. makes sense. You've got, Shados is a really talent, and Starzo actually as well, really talented, supportive players. I don't know enough about Wolfen, but also I feel like Starzo and Shados both have the potential to actually play, like, star roles if you need them to. Yeah. But they're, they're some of the most flexible players that you could pick up in EMEA. And listen, if, if CNET or Nucky isn't going to Na'Vi, whichever one of them isn't, looks like it might be Nucky at this point. Dude, stick them on that team, and you might have a really interesting squad. And I just also like the connections that they have, right? You already mentioned the coach one, but Starso and Coldamenta have experience together as well. So, like, there's chemistry within some of these guys as well, and who knows who's going to fill in the roster. So I think this is a, this is a contender here in him. Yeah, I actually, I actually think so. Yeah. It seems impossible to, like, theorycraft the roles even because... It's all up in the air. Sure, this is, yeah, this is fucking fresh. (laughs) (laughs) And everybody's flexible. (laughs) Tell me more about Wolfen, though. What does Wolfen play, and who is he playing with? That kind of shit, because I am Wolfen's like a, he's a chamber sentinel player, mostly. Uh, Like, I I, I don't remember being, like, blown away by him. Like, he was definitely, like, a a good player in the the VRL championship or whatever. Um, Yeah. But it's like, yeah, picture. mostly chamber. Yeah, it looks like mostly chamber right there. Um, so, okay, that's what you'd expect. But look, <laughs> honestly, the, my one bar we for like Durka. going in the next we year. We have Durka at home. Durka at home. <laughs> true, true. Uh, but like, if if you're a chamber player that has any games on another Sentinel, I'm just like, yes good <laughs> you're not going to be complete trash next year like i think if you only play chamber it like forces you to play like in a very distinct way um and i potential chamber nerves in the future maybe who knows but like regardless i think that agent is is falling off in yeah. popularity so i'm glad to see that there's some killjoy in there for some ascent gameplay i mean that's interesting actually that he's played majority sover in his career so he's yeah um, yeah, it must these... have been like the team he was on previously, because I don't think he's pl- like he played some he Sova. Hasn't played in a long time. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, if you look at the old ninety days. days, he's played two maps of Sova, but his stats yeah. are kind of crazy. I don't. I mean, this might just be you know uh, tiny VRL. sample size in VRL. Yeah, like, been a shit team, but yeah. I, I think KPR Case very... were undefeated, if I'm not mistaken, or they were like insanely good in whatever uh, in in the Spanish league. They weren't undefeated, but they were like yeah, they were very good. Okay, they three of their finals. Et cetera, Intriguing. Et cetera. So, like, the stats are naturally going yeah. to look good. I, I have to go back and watch a couple of his games and see whether. Can I consult the spreadsheet again, real quick? <laughs> Let me bring it up. I just really like seeing this. <laughs> well, what do you want to look at? No, nothing. I so just wanted to. Because I'm not. I'm a, I'm a visual guy. Mm. I can't picture it in my head. Dude, to see the names. Enzo is on, like, Link to Carmen Core and Heretics here. Enzo to Carmen Core makes so much more sense, man. So yeah, much more sense. It does. If, if I was. You know, choosing where to put him, but yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of the koi, the the suspected core that's been reported. Yeah, you know, of Cordamenta, Baba as the coach, and Shados and Starza. I think if you have that to build around, dude, you can add in some easy pieces. There's a lot of quality free agents, I mean, in, even in the ones the just there. You got Nuki, you've got Twiston, you got Trex. That they can, you know, especially. Uh, Nookie and Trex, in my opinion, have demonstrated an ability to play many different roles as well. The yeah. same thing as, uh, as as what you've got from Shados and Starzo. You want them on certain roles more than others, maybe, but like that is looking like a very versatile team if you can get a system working together. Uh, that's an interesting squad. I mean, there's still old um, uh, Ascend players as well, like Monster is hanging around for, for one of those oh, yeah. like, Sentinel Smokes kind of roles where he plays the Viper for them too. Yeah, interesting times. There's definitely a lot of talent available to go around in EMEA. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about some of the free agents, though, in North America, because there was a leak that got posted to Reddit. I think this was people using the fucking scrim tool. Did you see the tool that um, people yeah. were selling Crazy or someone was trying gross. to sell? Bonkers fucking shit. Insane. It's you can like, just literally see any custom game like information ever. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Even when you hide wild. it. Wild. Yeah, yeah, even when you hide it is the most important thing. And yeah, like you could see information about like the past of what this accounts are, because obviously all the people who are trialing are using 
you know, their alt accounts or whatever that have weird names or barcodes or yeah, whatever. Weird names. You can I see mean, like BCJ's going under big guy gaming. I mean, it's, just, <laughs> it's literally like, hello, I am BCJ. I mean, that isn't exactly big guy gaming. He's not uh, under the, he's not flying under the radar there, is he? But yeah, sorry, Bar. Well, he also never really had to do this, so. <laughs> But the, the one that I specifically wanted to talk about was this one, actually, which is TSM. We know that TSM are looking to try and build a really good squad heading into next year. But it's more so the players here, actually. Because Xander has kind of gone under the radar a little bit, along with people like, uh, you know, Baby Bay, Scuba, these kind of, like, really talented um, free agents in North America. But the one that caught my eye specifically was Nismo. Because I thought the Ghost, or whatever they're called now, Ghostbusters or whatever, I thought they were going to try and stick together during Ascensions. But maybe, you know, maybe Nismo's going around looking for a team. Nismo was incredible. Nismo yeah. is, uh, Nismo and Xander, actually, that's why I put them in the topic title, I think are like tier one players that should be looked at for top teams. Um, and I yeah. didn't actually realize that Nismo was even looking for that. Also, like, I think, like, Nismo's individual performance in stage, uh, wait, stage two of last year, like, was unironically, like, one of, like, the top players in the entire league. Yeah. Like, he was so insanely good. His KO was just unreal. And, like, Ghost Gaming were a very good team, but, like, he was sort of, like, the the thing that pushed them over the edge up until, like, the playoffs catastrophe um, of Ghost Gaming. So, like, I was honestly shocked to see him, like, not find a home on a team. Um, cause I think like really sick KO players are a little hard to come by. Um, but yeah, I was, I, I, I think that this team, any team that gets them will be good. And looking at like that roster that was being trialed, like that's a pretty sweet team. Not going to lie. A lot of, a lot of chances in Ascension. Yeah. It, cause if you think about it, there's like, in some sense, there's like a top 30 North American players. Cause there's, uh, five teams with six slots. So you're looking at kind of like. If it was exactly they were all super teams and all the roles were exactly distributed, you're kind of looking like a top 30. I, I think I would have Nismo and Xander in the top 30 players in North America. You, you might have to break it down a bit more by role, but like they're, they're quality. Yeah. Really quality. Good quality players. Let's join Shroud's team he's making. Dude. Ascension. <laughs> Get the bag from Shroud. Yeah. I hear he's paying a milli per year. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the rumors that I've pulled together. The contextual clues. The two orgs told you that at the airport, did he? Yeah, he said that in the airport while he's wearing a loud jersey. He just walked past you in the loud jersey and went, a milli. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm paying a million dollars to any player that joins me. Why did he say that to you? He just said that to me and walked off. It was <laughs> really strange. He wants Brenda yeah. coach. Yeah, yeah, maybe you could be a coach. He also offered me that position. Oh, for a milli? No. For how much? I get to go on his stream every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little clout position. A little clout position. Yeah. You should take that. You should take that. You actually get to be his live sub notification. We're just, we have shot every time. You just have to see yeah. a little webcam. They just call me up every time he gets a sub. God, that would be such a funny bit to do for a stream. Uh, hire someone to do live sub notifications. <laughs> like you turn off all the donation alerts, and whenever you get a sub, the person has to go like, ooh a sub or like whatever your sub noise is. <laughs> I think you just clip that right there and then paste it into your stream. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah, that, that works. Why not? Um, there's some other free agents though that are hanging around um, in North America specifically that I wanted to discuss. Actually, not just North America, but the Americas, right? Um, so I wanted to talk starting off with um, I, I just want to kind of throw shit out there and see if any of this is interesting to you, that they'll find a home, that they're a hot prospect, that kind of stuff. BCJ, big guy gaming. He, he was leaked via, again, the tool that can see everything. The omniscient eye of Sauron has found BCJ um, trialing with EG. I'm sure he's probably trialed with some other people as well. Um, but he's an unrestricted free agent who's undoubtedly one of the best initiators within the Americas region. Um... Where do you see him going? I thought he'd already have announced something by now, honestly. Yeah. It, I mean, what... Can I consult the spreadsheet from the America section, please? <laughs> <laughs> I need to see the visual elements. Mm. <laughs> because I, as much as he is a I don't hot think there free is a, agent... Wait, is there an there America's... Is, it's in the top left. Oh, the top left. So if we zoom in, you, we can see, like, the five NA teams. And there really isn't much 
of a spot for Literally. anything really, is there? I mean, I, Sentinels would be the obvious choice because he's already got the prior relationship with, with Psycho. But I think with Sassy coming in and they've got Zekin as well to fulfill that kind of flexing initiator role, that's probably not going to be happening. 100 Thieves seem pretty happy with, with Derek. Don't blame them. Derek's a great player. And uh, Crashies and Victor and FNS seem to have come go to, gone yeah, to NRG yeah. as like almost this package deal with, with Chet. So it doesn't feel like there's much of a spot on any of the America's teams right now for that kind of position other than EG. Mm. Yeah. Unless he wants to be the sixth player on a roster, but I don't think a player of the caliber of BCJ will want that. Is a, yeah. the, I think the sixth player on a lot of these rosters is probably only going to be competing under um, other circumstances where you know a player might be injured or they get sick or you know they get suspended for one reason or another. Like that's the only time that you're probably going to see a six player play unless a team is actively trying to build around it, which I don't think many teams will. It would be crazy to me if BCJ is the only XSET player who doesn't go anywhere in partnership. That would be That'd ridiculous. Be just wild yeah. To me. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I I feel like he just makes so much sense for EG. Like, yes. if that's the only spot for him, that is just it kind is. of a no-brainer for both parties, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it's yep. not like EG have a cracked initiator player. And, and if you're starting with... Well, I mean, Calm, I would kind of put into that. Yeah. Calm isn't on I the I would same say the, the only thing... Man. No, well, no, oh, but he's, also, I'd, he's not that much higher. He's I, not I in think the same again, tier, I don't think. Mm. I think BCJ is a tier one America's initiator and Com is not. I would not put Com in the same tier as uh, who else would even be in there from from this, but like Crashies, yeah, Crashies. and um, I guess Torrent. Sassy. <laughs> I'm trying to think of North Sassy. America, but Sassy is one of them. Uh, <laughs> Zeppa, but I don't even know whether Zeppa belongs in the tier one, honestly. Um, and Derek. Yeah, Derek. So you, Derek, BCJ, Crashies are the three um, that... I would have up there from the North American region, and I wouldn't have come in there. Okay, but it's not like uh, it's sure maybe he's fourth or whatever, but he's still fucking within the top. You know, he's still within the tier one in my mind. Like, and when I think of BCJ, the only thing that makes me say like kind of agree with you is the champions' performance. Other than that, I'd say Com was pretty much on the same level, and. The the reasons why BCJ is really 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 good is because I think on the team that he was in he's he's out of game really really a good personality to help everybody uh, propel themselves and then in the game he plays with just a level of uh, aggression sometimes where you could tell that he's trying to put the game on his shoulders but I don't like where where what else are you really rating him highly on outside of that sort of thing. I thought his Sova and his Omen gameplay in particular from BCJ were like significantly better, like up with the, the top players in the region in terms of what the impact that he was getting in the game. I, I can't remember whether it was stage one, stage two, something like that, but he, he had a, a series of time where he was frying on Sova. I mean, he looked like he was, yeah, like one of the, one of the best Stage two playoffs, wasn't it? Something like that. I, I don't know. Yeah. But The yeah, only thing I'd say is, is also just like, looking at the the agents that they play, like there is a lot of overlap between bcj and com so like while yes you're probably trying to fill out another initiator slot um for uh for eg mm-hmm. like I, i'm looking at like some like really sick like flash initiator player probably because like com is probably going to be on like the scout type of initiator uh of like fade sova more um so like i actually would be looking at like someone like nismo for eg like if if eg were committed to replacing the two players that they haven't like confirmed yet which are like smokes and flash initiator like i think you're looking at uh nismo and i think you're looking at someone like uh marv or xan like someone like that for smokes um to to round out the comp or or scuba even i I think it's also really really sick yeah yeah i think there's Definitely directions that EG can go in, but from the the rumblings that we've heard from journalists is just it's not an in- interesting roster particular. So I don't mm-hmm. think they're going, you know, for Xander Nismo BCJ or something like that because otherwise people would be BCJ much more excited the behind the scenes. What's well, BCJ is the, the rumored scrim, like right? That's yes, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. been linked to them, but I mean, in terms of like many different free agents on the team, yeah, that yeah, would yeah. be that would be stirring stuff up behind the scenes a bit more, and it doesn't really seem to be. Yeah. The case, if, I, I think. Hey, BCJ, BCJ is in chat. What team are you joining? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to just let us know. Let's just ask them. Just leak everything, please. Um, I also wanted to talk about Scuba. I feel like nobody's talking about Scuba, but for teams that have their IGL on the non-smokes position, 
Scuba's got to be, I mean, it's Marv and then, in my mind, Scuba in terms of non-IGL smokes players within North America. Um, there's also Apoth to throw in there too, because Apoth was good. But if Apoth was going anywhere, it would be staying on EG, surely. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it, even if we're maybe going now down towards like top ascension level teams, Scuba's been very good to the point where I would absolutely expect him to be one of the top prospects for top ascension teams. Um, if you if you don't have an IGLing smokes player, um, but I just haven't heard his name run around at all yeah i think scuba is like actually just one of the sickest like side anchors uh in in the league last year uh in the games he played like his his ascent a site holds were just like ungodly i i don't know like always finding like one at least usually two kills like he had a lot of like really clever angles he could play like even as a solo player uh without tree control uh was able to like pop up on like the jump box towards heaven and like get like a really tight angle uh over that while smoking off main like i just i i really like him like if you're trying to like if like solidify your defense like that's the player you want um and then i see marved as like the late round like clutch god so I, I think it's like sort of like two different ends of the spectrum you have one really sick defensive side anchor and then you have one guy that's gonna be like really impactful late in rounds and smoke players are usually alive back there um but either way, like I think those two players like have to have a team, and and Scoob is the one that's going to get slept on. But like he should find a, a very good home, I believe. I, I think that player is very good. Um, we're getting some super chats here about some other people, but but the before we mad. before we get to the the what the people are talking about because they've got some great points. They're I wanted rioting. To, well, I brought, wanted to bring up uh, Mitch from Cloud Nine too because he's uh, they've officially parted ways. I think we none that was coming for a while. But Mitch is one of again this like extinct sentinel role within north america mitch was one of the players that was playing that along with you know dapper whippy yeah there, yep. there aren't that many p people who are actually hardcore playing the sentinel kind of stuff finesse what sorry finesse would have been in that category yeah too, finesse though. def you know like there are some igls just, that were picking it up too it's it's kind of what i was saying earlier right it's just kind of a dead role um and for now. unfortunately for, for now yeah it's kind of a dead role and that that he values them quite a bit. Um, so I'll probably give the same answer I gave about Dapper. I just don't necessarily think that it's... I mean, out of all the rosters that we're trying to fill out still in, in NA, that position is filled, kind of. Do you, you know? do you think it's even worthwhile picking up these players as six players? Or do yeah. you just kind of wait for them and pick them up when the meta changes? You know what uh, I mean? Like, I think it's Wait worth... for the midseason and then see if Chamber's disappearing. It, it's, I think they're worth it to pick up as a six player because, I mean, they're few and far between at the moment in terms of people who have been playing that role recently. But also, I don't think anyone will want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. do, on, the, on the off chance that the, that the team decides to go in that direction with the meta, like, I think most teams would rather work out a core five and have their Chamber player when they're not playing Chamber either pick up the other sentinels for them which or just have somebody else do it i mean probably on the same the same vein of what fanatic were doing was the tail end of it where Durka was kind of playing the chamber and they had alfie playing the kj or you know whatever else whenever they weren't playing chamber that kind of that that dichotomy between the players who don't want to do it but you also want people you want to be in t1 are you gonna actually have bench players who fucking get paid more than the <laughs> starting roster yeah, maybe. I mean, you definitely could. <laughs> That's a but, really funny but there concept. Also, there have to be bench players. Every team must have mm -hmm. a sixth player. So yeah. you've got to find them somewhere. I mean, you've I mean, you got to persuade someone. I say nobody wants to do it. There will be players that want that will take up that, well, I was, that offer. I was thinking of just like signing analysts like who want to, like the boy situation from running Bruh. these way back when. Yeah. I mean, you can. They're not, they're, you're not allowed to sign coaches as coaches. players. But... You could sign someone as a player and then be like, oh, I swear, guys, they're not coaching. And then they just coach behind the scenes, I guess. But they can't technically be a coach. I don't know really how you would enforce that, though. Because what's the difference between a player that gives a lot of feedback inside yeah. and outside game who's just permanently on the bench and, a, and an analyst or a coach? Yeah. Here's my pitch. Here's my pitch. Please, For you? unless you're For trying you to, to join the team. Yeah, 100 Thieves. You have already have, you had a great track record. Your casters came in and completely overhauled your entire team. You made deep runs into the playoffs, going to internationals. It's insane, right? But what's better than two casters? Dare I say three casters and oh. one on your bench as a sixth man. All I'm saying, that would be yeah. good. But regardless, if you're not trying to run like a legitimate like six-man roster, like 
I actually think teams should stop like hiring like the six man that's like no one wants. It's like a guy that's been in the scene for a few years, like couldn't find a main team, doesn't want to play Ascension, was like streaming on the side. Like, I don't want that. Like, sign 17 year olds, right? Like, sign players that are still in high school uh, that you are training to prepare for effect. the future. Like, please, someone that doesn't have the time to like actually dedicate like full days to like scrims and whatnot, but can like come in and learn. Like, please, I want to see that for the future of our region. I think that's a really good point, actually, is that that's, that's one thing that the six, the six slot on a roster provides as a good opportunity is that kind of, if you get in a young player that's driven, that's, that's clearly showing promise as well, it's a very good opportunity to put them in our system. And there will be opportunities. There will be teams that have their five core and something will come up and a, uh, a player will get injured, get sick, whatever, won't be able to play. And that six player will get play time. I mean, it's going to happen. I'm not going to say it's guaranteed, but it's going to happen at some point. And so the teams that aren't prepared that have actually just kind of like coasted and, are, you know, kind of mailing it in with an analyst in their sixth spot, which there might be teams trying to do that. I don't think it's necessarily wise because there will come a time where you have to use that six player um, when you when you might don't do. realize it. And yeah. uh, it could well, backfire. But that's, bad, I'm just saying, you know? it's a great opportunity <laughs> to use that for talent development, like you were saying. Ender. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to I want to get to two of these super chats though actually because great uh, point here made by Eight Bit Ducky, um, who said the phase roster is just getting left out of a lot of these discussions and I saw a Reddit post actually about Baby Bay in the exact same vein like why is no one talking about Baby Bay but I mean I feel like we've brought up especially Baby Bay and Dicey multiple times as great pickups for certain teams but Baby Bay Dicey and Eight Bit Ducky mentioned Superman as well and talking about Poise Two is a good IGL but I feel like almost all the teams have locked in who they want to IGL at the moment in uh, yeah. in the American systems if they want English speaking IGLs but in terms of like there are definitely still spots where people like this could fit in you know even Sentinels could have had a discussion about whether they want Baby Bay or Tens for example I had them in my real Sentinels roster yeah. we did that segment the yeah. slide was up for 0.1 of a second because we just went <laughs> off the fucking rails. Yeah. But th I did I did put together a, a, a Sentinels roster that I thought could be pretty valid and Baby Bay was part of that um, just because he is like one of the star players that's been left out of the discussion recently. Mm. Um, but but because the reasoning is most rosters have already seemed to, at least in the Americas, the, the NA teams that would be picking up players like Baby Bay and Dicey and Poised, they've already locked up the, their core of who they want in those roles. There was I, very I think few people forget spots. that we... We went, yeah, we went from, you know, the eight teams in Challengers down to five NA teams. Yeah. What are you going to do? I mean, I, I, I fully agree, though, that some of these guys aren't being talked about enough. But when you have Sentinel signing uh, out of NA talent, then this is what it is. It's and just... I think if they didn't end up going for tens, they probably would have gone for a player like Baby Bay. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, it's like a logical next step for them if, they, if for whatever reason they didn't go for tens. But. Yeah, but I, I feel like also there's, um, you know, there's, there's spots on teams like NRG, for example, where you have Som, you have uh, Victor as well. There are arguably players that are out there that could pound for pound perform better than those players. Maybe, I mean, with the, the argument with Victor is he fits into the system incredibly well if you have a cracked chamber player like Ye that he's making space for. Ye's yeah, not on that team anymore. And you might require Victor to do more and we don't know whether he's going to be able to deliver that every time because sometimes he looks like he really can and sometimes he, he doesn't quite live up to that standard. So it, it, it kind of feels like we're going to get to a point where some players in Ascension are going to be better than the players in Tier 1, just pound for pound. Not whole yeah. teams, but there are definitely going to be crack players like the FaZe guys left out where they actually would probably be a really good fit for one of the Tier 1 teams that... Maybe they get like a mid-season pickup or something. Maybe we see trades like that happen. Yeah. The thing is like the, the schedule for next year is so weird because you start with like the big gigantic tournament and then you have like your leaks. Like you probably no, don't make a change after that tournament right before like challengers stage one. Right. But then like there's not a lot of breaks in the in the year to actually make changes. You could well, do it like during the first international event, I suppose. Well, I think you don't mid qualify. the mid-season transfer window yeah. though, is immediately after Sao Paulo, isn't it? It's like March 4th to March 20th. Wait, is it really? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Early. It's yeah, early. Like it's in March. It basically spans the majority of, of March. But I think, am I right in thinking that falls in the calendar? Like right after Sao Paulo before... The, I think so. Before, no, it's, it's, it's slightly before and through the first right. league. 
Okay. Mm. Like yeah. there's probably midway through the the first right, right. season essentially, right. which makes split, sense. Whatever we're gonna call it. The, the teams have tested their rosters ever so slightly in Sao Paulo, and they have time to make changes before the first split. Yeah, but it just I seems mean, like those like that seems like a really small amount of time to like make a drastic decision like changing your roster. Like I don't necessarily hate it. I just looking at the schedule for next year, I feel like you're probably not going to see many changes and all the changes are going to come during like the first or the second, I guess, international event. Um, and that would be like your only real big time for change. I don't know. I just feel like we, we had this sort of issue this year where there was just like not a lot of games being played. So it was like you would see teams play and then it would be like two months later, you see yeah. them again. And like, did they change their roster or not? So like, I, I do think the schedule is better because the teams that are in the league will just play far more games. So maybe that allows teams to make better decisions. For and and remember like that, that, but remember this isn't going to be the case moving forwards. Like the actual structure yeah. of the league as it continues into the future is going to be like a split instead of Sao Paulo. So it won't just yeah. be one tournament. It'll be like, you know, you're actually playing a full uh, kind of league system with the playoffs at the end. It'll feel a bit more fleshed out before you get to the mid-season transfer window, I think. Um, sure. But it is still fairly early on for moves like this. I wanted to move on though and talk about another free agent, right? There's Heat, who is a very strong Brazilian oh. player who has been tweeting that he's like in America, got his American visa. I, I mean, I don't know why, but I, I also didn't realize it was a permanent resident. I thought it was a work visa, but holy shit, dude, that's, that's like this is like an advertisement for Heat. <laughs> I'm willing yeah. to I'm willing to join any team in the Americas. I have I am an easy logistical pickup. Yeah, but um, Heat is cracked. I mean, yeah. he's incredibly good, and he's he must be one of the um, top players for people looking to like get a. Uh, a replacement star, right? It's not like Loud need it because they have Aspas there, but Heat's nasty. Like a, a Furia or an MIBR, uh, uh, potentially. Maybe one of the uh, Spanish-speaking teams as well, or rather Spanish teams or organizations, if they wanted to build something like that, maybe that would be I would love to see Heat play in a team. Heat's really nasty would. good. I remember doing a loser's interview um, with him or at least watching it. i can't remember if i interviewed him or if i was watching it but it was when we were doing the ghost streams ages ago and it just felt like we were talking about them after they the team just crumbled at some point i was talking to him about it and it really did feel like i mean from his wording that it was like he just wants to play on a team where they've got their shit together you know what i mean oh where that he... was that was we interviewed him after they'd lost to ascend yeah because after he was they, like, the, the he just, the way he was, it was like, tobacco. my team just choked. Yeah. My team choked, like, because he was the, one of the only people putting up numbers in that game. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, he was just popping was off. Was it the rematch? I think so. I Maybe. think it was after it was, the it rematch. Was, it was the game that they ended up getting knocked out in because it was the losers match. It was the elimination game. Oh, okay. Game. It was the yeah. elimination game. No, that was yeah. against Crew. Right. Yeah. No? Maybe it was no, no, no. Sorry. I'm a fucking idiot. It was against X10. Whatever. Was sure. it X10? Yeah. yeah it was, I think, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was against X10. But I, my, my takeaway from that was that, like, Heat didn't seem happy at the time with just the team that he was in. And it, ever since then, I've always just thought the guy was absolutely cracked, just numbers-wise. And it feels like he just needs to be put in the right system. Similar to a lot, a lot of players have, you know, had that problem, I think, over the course of their careers. But Heat, um, yeah, he probably deserves a spot in the Tier 1, I'd say, just based off of the, the performances that he's had. Yeah, I mean, it it doesn't have a particularly deep uh, agent pool, but his jet and chamber have both been nasty. And there, there are Brazilian teams that presumably are, still require a player like that because we don't really know what... At least I don't know what Fury and MRBR have done. Don't know if the fucking Oracle of the spreadsheet has more information than I do. <laughs> it probably does, but but I haven't, I haven't does, heard anything I think concrete it's wrong. about those teams. Um, I also wanted to talk about Brent and Valen. Because if we actually, can we bring up the spreadsheet again? Because if we you know, when we were trying to plug BCJ in, if you're trying yeah. to plug in Trent Valin, we thought that that might be the core of Sentinels. I remember I was having that discussion. But the core of Sentinels is Def Zekin. So where the fuck do you put Trent Valin? Is that just an Ascension, Ascension core now? La, 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 la. I guess it could be EG again. Like those are the right roles, yeah. but yeah, it's tough. Yeah, they would. They would, they would fit into EG, would they not? Yeah. Quite nicely. Yeah. 
replacing Apoth and Tom. But also, there's going to be a team that just tries to clean up Ascension, right? Surely. Yeah, I mean, that's what TSM's stated purpose is. I mean, d- didn't the guard say they were sticking around? Yes. Yeah, well, that is, I think they said they were going to explore or something. They, it was very, it was like corporate wording in their mm-hmm. message that basically implied like, we're going to see how the, co- the, the competitive circuit mm-hmm. I think the guard was confirmed. Time. I think they confirmed. I think Xset was the one who was going to. Uh, I don't think the guard was confirmed. Okay. Unless it was, unless it was something recently. But they, they, if you pull up the the tweet, it was very corporate. It, there was so much corporate vaguety, and I've just I've been in esports right. so long that I was like reading into it, and I'm like, this this gives them leeway in any direction <laughs> that they wanted like, to go. We're going to explore. The yeah, this Amazon, is the this is the one that Brent's talking the globe. about. Yeah. Can, can anyone ascension? tell me which coolers work? <laughs> <laughs> that was the tweet. Yeah. Why, why are you? Why are you la 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 lying? You the street's been talking to you, Bala? No, la 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 because I don't. Really, I don't just, just, just talking about the players who are not going to make it to the fucking franchising because there's no spots left. It's fucking. Uh, what are we going to do about it, man? They're good players. They should be two one, but. It might get la 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 la. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you think it's a pointless conversation? Yeah. They're just they're just. No, I down. don't. I no no no. That's not what I meant by that at all. I'm just saying we're just gonna we're gonna be like oh, Valen, Trent, like they're free agents, pick them up. But we're just gonna plug our ears and go la 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 instead of actually talking about it because, I mean, it's not a problem. It's just how the business works. But it sucks at the same time because again, more players who are on the list of people who should be picked up, but there's just no space. I think that's awesome, by the way. So that sucks for the players like yeah. not to be in the main league. But like, how cool is it that those players are going to be in Ascension next year? Yeah. Like, we're actually going to have a meaningful secondary league. This is something, correct me if I'm wrong. Has there ever been an esport in America where we have actually created a valuable secondary league? I know in Europe, they've been fantastic at it. Like, the ERLs in League of Legends, the VRLs already in uh, in in Valorant are awesome, and it's a perfect way to, like, feed talent into the main league. So, like, you always look at Europe like, okay, they've got talent for days. There's always going to be talent there. I know in the past, both China and Korea have been have had really successful secondary leagues in League of Legends. In in North America, literally never has there been anything that's like, oh yeah, we'll have colleges, get some orgs together, you know, that'll be awesome. That'll be our feeder league. The colleges and the high schools are going to change everything. Like, Send no, Trent and Valent back happen. to college. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. Give back them, a, give them a, a, a full ride to Colorado, gutter, <laughs> you know, never mind college for people. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, it's crazy. It's crazy what these scholarships for, <laughs> for esports schools are but regardless like i think that's awesome that we're actually gonna have a meaningful secondary league the qualifying like the whole system is really cool for that um and that we're already like being like damn these players should have spots already yeah, yeah. them qualifying in that league only brings the value of that league up for players that are trying to get better yeah i mean it will be nasty do you think this is again another question from a uh, super chat here do you think that there will be teams like l- let's say the tsm or, or whoever the guard whatever Signed some kind of core with Trent, Valin, you know, Dicey, Baby Bay, whatever. Trump. Is there going to be a tier two team that is capable of actually making it deep at the top level where we're going to be looking at it and we're like, because we've had the same situation happen in Overwatch where there was tier two teams that for whatever reason, maybe their players were underage and so they wanted to stick together as a full core, that kind of stuff. But they were like top two in the world and they were playing in tier two. And once they actually qualified into the main level, they, they were making it to the finals uh, of that year. Um, yeah. do, do you think the same thing is going to happen in Valorant in you know uh, North America or maybe in uh, EMEA? I guess it could... Actually, I don't think it would happen in EMEA. Honestly, I'm looking at North America as looking like the most competitive uh, tier two scene, to be honest. Because again, I, they're going to have all possible. of the teams competing here as well, where you should get really good scrims, and that might fuck up I, some I, of the rest of the world. I also think the nature of the way that the league works is really good because, like, it, we we talked earlier about like some of the what's the RRQ team or whatever that's like signing yeah, yeah. their players that finished like ninth place. Like, I think that having to prove yourself to qualify already like means that you're like going to be much better going to the next league because like you have to build a roster to qualify to move in whereas like some of these rosters could theoretically like sandbag it don't think that's necessarily happening uh in most situations but like i I think it's entirely possible that you put together a roster that can compete with the top nene maybe not the best 
Um, but like you could have like legitimately competitive rosters in this Ascension League already. Yeah, it's it's a cool um I think side effect of the the way the system's set up as well. Um but also I hope what will happen, like you mentioned the coasting aspect. I why the hope doesn't happen is that teams end up coasting when they're in the partnership system already, where they don't make necessary changes and they're just kind of just resting on their laurels almost if they've even earned them in the first place. Yeah. Um but my hope is that with this with this particular partnership system that Riot are doing, mm. they do hold a lot of power in their hands where they can make changes later down the line. Yeah. It's not like there's the teams are bought into it and they've paid money to earn their spot. It's it's like they had to get accepted. And so theoretically, if a team does start coasting in that manner and starts devaluing the whole thing, they should get kicked out mm. and replaced with a team that actually does give a fuck, which, yeah, it seems like we'll have no shortage of in, in Ascension of the Orcs just trying to earn their way in. Yeah. I'm extremely hyped, actually, to watch the Tier 2 circuit. I think it'll be great. As yeah. long as organizations are willing to pay salaries and players stick around and they don't go to fucking Gundam Evolutions or whatever as the next, <laughs> the next, port, the next port for esports wanderers, then, um, then it should be extremely entertaining to watch. There's going to be tons more roster mania That's happening as well. Next week, we actually will have all of these rosters at least primarily set with six players, they might not announce head it. coach... They will be in the database, though. Oh, is there a public data? The fucking API? The, the app? No, no, no. No, I don't mean the app. I mean, they, they will be in the app as well. But there is, a, there is a global database that Riot have said within 48 hours of contracts ah. being signed, they're going to be in the database. I don't okay. know when that database is going to launch or if it's around or, or if I've it's just public. missed it. What, well, sorry? Or if it's public. It, like it might just be available. No, they have said it's public data. facing. Okay. It, cool. says in the rules it, it exists in League of Legends already. It's going to be the exact same format. It's literally going to be a Google spreadsheet that has everything that is live updated and you can just join. Yeah. Hmm. So that that cool. will be out. So, I mean, maybe, I mean, what is the, yeah, by the time, by the time we. Yeah, three days. Yeah, w within three days and then 48 next hours episode, from that. We'll by, the, have, by the time of the next episode. We should episode, have concrete news. Yeah, we should have some actual concrete and shit. And then the, we'll get scour the, the database. Yeah. yeah, and because, then we we do power rankings. I mean, this is already like what a three hour long episode during the off season. Yeah, and then next week we're gonna have the concrete rosters. But also, then we might not have too much to talk about until February. That's we'll okay. find we something to talk about. Up. <laughs> off season tournaments. Yeah. That's where Bala starts his conspiracy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's let's close things out then with our final segment, the most important segment: why it's weekly award. why it's a weekly award Dude, we're going to we got the salsa dancing one again yeah this is the salsa dancing one um it's for the the player that's the best at salsa dancing oh i mean we just run a manscaped ad at the bottom of the thing <laughs> <laughs> that's, i mean <laughs> this episode this episode nope. not sponsored in nope. fact by manscaped so don't use that i mean you could try i don't think it'll do i don't anything. think it'll work i don't think it'll work um you know, you know what I've never realized about you guys is the skill it takes for you guys to see what's coming up on the screen and which damn trophy to pick up within the five seconds. You guys are getting it right every know. time. I didn't know. I couldn't tell. It was zoomed in on the bottom section. Yeah, it's very I've, impressive. I've learned that. Well, it was the same one as last week. That's how uh, I. That's how I've remembered it. You know. But yeah, we've got a selection of awards, and this one, I don't know who to give to. NASA. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, give it to NASA for they shot. No, we're giving it to this guy because we used his spreadsheet. Yeah, like that, that is a great, yeah. that is a great call. That true. is a great call. Flynn, the NASA's Oracle an spreadsheet mention, creator. Though. This is actually the global database. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going to hire this guy to just... Yeah, yeah. legitimately. Um, yeah, th this, this entire episode could have been summed up by read the spreadsheet. Go, yeah, go, go to Flynn go to underscore Flynn's VRL Twitter. and just make up some other shit and listen to what people are super chatting. And that, that's the entire episode. And we've dragged that out for three hours. So good work with the content, guys. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to thank the Baron Harkonnen for making a surprise appearance. Uh, that, that really brightened up my day. No problem. Yeah, I was actually thinking about what we should do for uh, what me and Beth should do for Halloween. I think we've decided that we're going to go. Have you been watching Stranger Things? I know of. No. I mean, I've, I'm not the I most recent the first season. part. Uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, Eleven, the, yeah. the primary protagonist. Ooh. Eleven, the, the the main protagonist. If you've ever yeah, watched, yeah, 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 yeah. Bala, yeah. Come on. And uh, wait, I haven't watched. No spoilers. No, 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 no spoilers. And Papa, oh, okay. 
You know Papa? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Beth's going to be Papa and I'm going to dress in a hospital gown. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I, I think that'd be pretty good, right? I've got the hair like nearly That's there. That's good. I just yeah. need to grow it out a little bit longer. Holy fuck. She doesn't have as fat a forehead, but I think I can look like a like a seven-year-old if I yeah. really, really use a lot of moisturizer from now until let's end the episode <laughs> let's end the episode <laughs> all right put down in the comments what book you've been reading recently and uh, we'll see you next week when we have some finalized roster news see you then bye